to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break. I'm ready to do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field. It's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome back to Damstadt. This is the Studio Blockmasters. We are live here, six men and six women competing over four boulders. Mike Langley here in the studio alongside me, Gaz Parry. Special guest today, Eddie Falk from the climbing circuit, circuit climbing, get it right. And Stasha Gayo, thank you so much for joining us. So, we are live. We have got a short show for you, just 15 minutes before the action gets underway. And Gaz, let's have a little think about the Studio Block. It's an absolutely fantastic comp, and more importantly, it's a fantastic cause that they put this on for. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is very fast becoming one of the most prestigious events of the season. It's now in its fourth year, and it's gone from an early starting point of like only two, three hundred competitors. This year, they've doubled the capacity to 600 competitors and split the competition into to two, two rounds yesterday, uh, four hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon. The majority of the good climbers we saw in the morning, obviously, to get the conditions and get the, the, uh, the good performance on the holds. I mean, it's been a fantastic idea behind this event. It's basically to raise money for uh, one of the local charities, the Youth Centre. Uh, pardon my German, I'm not very, very I'm good with the this. German. English is okay. <laughs> um, it's the uh, Heidelplatz Evangelisa Varian for Jürgen Social Abiat. So it's a youth centre, youth operation that gives support to uh, young people and gives them the opportunity to learn new skills and develop those skills in, uh, in the outside world. So what a great event. What a great it is, event it is as well, and so many big names over the years. Let's have a little recap of just some of those more celebrity climbers who have made the podiums over the years. So obviously we've got Jernie Kruder. Jernie's uh, taken this title in the past in 2017, and one guy that just missed out was second that year. That's Chon Jong Won. Um, we've also got Yanya Gambra. She's had a couple of silver medals here, but is it going to be gold this year? We shall see. The, the weight is on her shoulders. Well, let's have a look at the semi-finals from today. Let's bring our guests in here, Eddie and Stasha. Uh, 
Sasha, I really want to talk to you first about the men's competition. I appreciate it's not been easy for you for this weekend. We'd really appreciate you joining us. You had an opportunity to catch some of the semi-final round. Looking at the names in the semi-finals then, uh, coming out in first place or sixth place from the qualification round is going to be uh, Evgeny Zazulin, then Vadim Timonov, Yone Kruder, Andrzej Perhac, Sergei Tepishko and Jakob Schubert. So we've got two Russians, two Slovenians, a Ukrainian and an Austrian. What did you think to the semi-final round? Well, as far as I could notice, uh, in the semi-final round, at least at the first half, we could see how st the different bowlers suited different people with their style. Like somebody could do the dynamic combo move in the, uh, the first problem and then just couldn't find themselves through the second one. Um, it's, it, it was like a more matter of a skill than it was actually anything else. Like th there was, uh, it was, and imperative to have a huge variety of skills, of course, and flexibility, of course, in the number four. When I saw Dom and <laughs> doing the split there, I, I I didn't know how other guys would do it that are less flexible, considering yeah, sure. uh, a really good flexibility from Dom. And, uh, anyhow, I think it's good that we have this diversity so people can still fight for the place, the, the uh, for the finals. Um, with their differences and they can still manage to get in even though they don't climb all four problems. So a couple of people, Eddie, who didn't get through, John Wong Chong, Gregor Vazonic and Sean McCaw, a couple of big casualties there. Yeah, it was really a round where I feel if you didn't get off to a good start, you were mentally on the back foot. Problem one was quite dynamic and aggressive and if you struggled on that, then problem two was very control, balance, a little bit tricky. And a lot of climbers I felt, especially for Sean, it was kind of over at that point when he struggled on those two. Even though he easily did three, he had lost it by then. And then, as we mentioned earlier briefly, number four was required such flexibility at the start that I feel that for these guys that were on the back foot, they came out and they just kind of knew it was over. And that can be the advantage of being someone like Evgeny Zazulin, who hasn't been in this situation before, doesn't feel that same pressure. He doesn't have that experience that tells him he's in trouble. So he kind of blunders through happily and does an amazing job. OK, let's focus a little bit on Boulder number four. I'm sure the internet will kind of sort this situation out for us. It's slightly controversial, Boulder. There's been a lot of talk about it since the semi-final round finished. Obviously, we have opinions. Hardest job in the world is to be a root setter, but let's just discuss that a little bit. Yeah, I feel to be a root setter is such a, a visible position that when they make a tiny mistake, everyone's out there to see it. And I do feel that the start of that boulder problem was a mistake, that it was too stretched out of position for them to establish. And if you're short, even if you could establish, you then had no drive to push out. Whereas, for instance, for me, I'm a photographer. If I make a mistake, no one ever sees that photo. Root setters don't get the benefit of the doubt. What's your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think root setters lately are experimenting way too much. And it's really annoying when you're climbing on such boulders because you see the mistakes, actually. And they keep appearing like volume turned around and way too much like uh, some foothold missing or st structure not good enough especially if you use bad volumes and bad holds that are not really good quality structure so then you have a lot of slipping a lot of friction dependent stuff and if you're in semi-finals that's even worse yeah. because if you climb in the last seven it's just a disaster like me personally, I have a lot of troubles with my skin and with friction. So if I'm in the last quarter <laughs> of the group, I just sometimes I stand no chance. They happened in Quiff, they happened many times, and root setters might just need to cool down a bit with the experimenting thing. Um, it's good to push the limits, but not that aggressively, I'd say. I think it was very interesting seeing a lot of the competitors um, in this environment, they were competing on a surface that doesn't have any carpet on it. And that surface gets progressively dirtier and dirtier. And then that's also transferred onto the volumes. And, and you can see the difference between a wall with carpet and a wall without carpet. With the carpet, the, the climbing wall stays much cleaner. And um, there were some people using their own carpet and their own towel. But in general, it, 
it almost looks like a little bit of an experience for very, very experienced climbers that should have a towel with them and a carpet yeah, with them. Yeah, you have to have a towel. I learned that years ago because you always get your shoes that even if you clean them off your pants, you still step down and mm. then there's still chalk on it and mm. you can't. Mm. Absolutely. All right, Gaz, let's focus on the women's competition then. So, I mean, an, an amazing performance by Melissa Leneve for <laughs> bringing it forwards, you know, and really up in a game and qualifying sixth place into the final. Jessica Piltz in there, a lead world champion. And then obviously we get into the meat of the, the competition, I think. It's the Slovenian team coming fast and hard. It's Mia Krampel, Katja Karic, Luka Rajkovic and Janja Gambrat. I mean, Janja, it's, it, she's phenomenal. I mean, she is uh, still going from strength to strength and... Um, I'm not too sure who can catch her at this event. Well, let's take this opportunity to focus on the Slovenian team a little bit. It's been the story, really, through the, especially in the women's, through the semi-final round, uh, qualification round as all. Well. And, Eddie, you're a man who knows a lot of things about climbing. The Slovenian team, they've had a lot of depth over the years, and there's some really interesting talking points. Just looking at the list here, of those athletes who are retired, who have potentially led on, to the force of nature is, that is the Slovenian team now. Looking back at some of the kind of legends from before, Martina Kufa, Maja Wittmar, Mina Markovic, Natalia Gross in the women's category. What is it about the Slovenians that makes them so good? It's an interesting thing, and that was something where I actually, when I started coming to World Cups, I had a talk to Mina Markovic about it because I was under the understanding, looking from the outside, that they probably had some East European super stringent controlled training structure and it was all very regimented and disciplined but it actually almost turned out to be the opposite it was just a bunch of people that were super passionate about their climbing super passionate about their training and it's a small country I think there's only two million people there and it's also geographically small they're quite close together and they get together they train together they push each other constantly and from the people you spoke about whether it be Mina Markovic, Maya Vidma also of course Maya Vidma's sister Katya Vidma who's a root setter now so who was helps. also on the World Cup circuit they have really shown the young Slovenians coming through what is possible and they've set a high bar but the young Slovenians are they're really going for it. And Stasha, I want to ask you, you moved to, to Slovenia as a young, young athlete. What's it like as a place to live and train? Well, at the beginning, I used to train together with them for a year and a half or two. And as, exactly as Eddie said, like, they're, they're training together really very often. And the fact that Slovenia is so small, you can get from one place on, the other, on one side to the other, like in two hours and a half to three. Um, and there are gym. They're mo more focused on on powerful bordering training and climbing routes and circuits and and like I can't really explain what the specifics are, but this relationship between coaches and athletes is somehow very specific because they still maintain a high authority on trainings but they manage to have fun anyhow and to be good friends on the training and outside the training. So the authority is still there. They still have to push their athletes outside their limits, even shout if needed. <laughs> but they keep up really well and they all try hard no matter what. If you give up, it's, there's peer pressure and you just must push your boundaries as best as you can. So the Slovenian superstar who know, needs no real introduction, Janja Garnbrick, Gaz, I mean, there's, she's just incredible, really. She's come through the semi-final round here in top spot, the only climber to get four tops. You've got some numbers for us just about Janja. Let's just put the spotlight on her for a minute. Well, first, first off, from a, um, a commentator's point of view and, and perspective, it's you keep trying to come up with these words to describe somebody like that and it's uh, it's almost sometimes you need to sit back and just watch them climb and just just leave them to it and just appreciate like poetry in motion almost mm. but some some facts that i got off uh, eddie so uh, correct us if they're wrong and uh, give us some feedback but eight times world champion six times world cup champion and 19 world cup wins 20 years old she's got quite she's got still got a little way to go though to uh um, beat some of the greats, maybe, and um, I'm and no doubt that she will. Looking back, we've got Sandrine LeVay, who won 30 golds in her career. 
Um, Janja's currently on 25 goals. And we've got Anna Storr, who only competed in Boulder discipline and walked away with 22 goals. But I think Janja, at 20 years old, then she's still got a long way to go and um, maybe along with those, t those titles, those goals, to be a couple of Olympic medals. There's motivation still out there for Janja. There is, and I think... When you look at the statistics for Yanya, they're astonishing. But as Gaz said, you need to almost put that away and then watch her climbing. And then you're like, well, it makes sense. She is that good. She is unbelievable. You know, one thing you didn't cover is in all the World Cups she's done since she was 16 years old, she's only missed finals once at a World Cup. She's been on the podium 89% of the time she's been in the World Cup with a win rate of, I think, a fraction under 50. Like... 49% of a World Cup she's in. No one in the history of climbing has been anywhere near that. And to me, pound for pound, she is the best climber in the world. I don't care if you want to say Andra or Schubert or Megos. Pound for pound, Yanya Gambra is unbelievable. So just as you can see on the big screen, the competition wall has just been revealed. The finalists will be announced very shortly. I want to ask you, Stasha, just continuing the conversation about Yanya. Obviously, it's a little bit tricky for you because you're direct competitors, but what is it about her that makes her capable of winning 19 World Cups? Yeah, I've given, I think, more thought to this topic than I probably should, and I still haven't really figured it out, what makes her so, so special. I think it's her bravery, her curiosity about her own self, She's experimenting with her body, with her abilities and trainings. She has bottomless motivation to train and to continue to improve as root setting improves. Because we have to accept the fact that root setting forces us to improve daily. And from my perspective, as somebody whose who's one of biggest goals is just actually to catch her, mm. it's quite different. Like, I'm not obsessed with uh, saying how good she is because I know how good she is yep. but I'm just building myself to be what not to be what she is but to catch her and overpass and I think everybody's trying to do that Miho, uh, Akio, everybody else and that's good for the competition because we strive to be better to be to overcome all our limits and boundaries and just become another person person in the end another athlete another i don't know being that is ready to change everything in order to reach some higher goal because somebody else was brave enough to set it yeah exactly. you know and that's that's good but still it's not good that we're still so far behind you know? <laughs> <laughs> eddie we've still got a little bit of time let's talk about somebody else who's one of the biggest hitters of all time. Jakob Schubert, Austrian, coming out here in the finals in last. He's first position overall. He'll be coming out sixth, 28 years old, 2018 lead world champion. You know, this guy's possibly one of the greatest of his generation in the men's competition. I feel that he really is. He's shown himself to be an amazing all-rounder. He came out very much the Austrian protege he was an amazing lead climber. He got, I think it was seven lead World Cup victories in a season, which was astonishing. And then in 2013, he went out to Kitzbühel, the World Cup there, and he won his first Boulder World Cup. And people were like, oh, this guy's quite good. And on rock, he's climbed 9B. He's climbed 8C, 8C plus Boulder um, in Austria. He's shown himself a complete package, and his mind game is impeccable he is one of the most cool calm collected athletes out there you know he's won over 20 world cups he he this is his bread and butter he knows what he's doing every time he steps on stage so just before the climbers that you can see on the screen get announced to the crowd i'm going to use this opportunity eddie you're going to have to run off very shortly million dollar question winners well that's a tricky one because Yanya Gambret, the girl we've talked about non-stop, has never won here. Exactly. Um, and I believe she can, but I'm going to I'm gonna throw the curl, all right? I think Melissa Leneve. Nice. <laughs> I, I'm going for Mel. I'm a huge Me fan too. of Mel. Um, I'm going for Mel. And in the guys, I'm going for Vadim Timonov. I think Vadim, if our strong problems, is just the next level. 
Nice one, Eddie. Thank you so much for helping us out here in the studio. Good luck out there. Good luck in the scrum. Yeah, thanks. Everyone watching on the stream, wave to me when I'm on the mats. All right. See ya. When you're in the way of the camera. When I'm in the <laughs> way of the Eddie. camera, exactly. <laughs> Stasha will be staying with us uh, throughout this boulder observation. Yep. She's not going to be going anywhere too fast anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> Climbers are just being announced to the crowd then. First climbers are on the mats. This is the moment where they get announced to the crowd before they go into their bold observation. Good crowd out there, eh, Mike? Superb scenes Some here. Some good noise already. Yeah, superb scenes really all this weekend, all through the 600 climbers that were here yesterday in the qualifiers, even semi-final round. Sometimes these local events, the semi-final crowd isn't that big, but Studio Block have put on a brilliant show and there's been absolutely great numbers kind of all through the weekend. You can see it there. So much local support. It's it's absolutely brilliant. This I think they quote on their website, this is the World Cup for the masses. And it yeah, kind of yeah. seems to be showing like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's but definitely it is. going from strength to strength. First, first time here for me and Mike. Um, yeah, it's been an absolutely amazing experience. The opportunity to climb alongside athletes such as Jeune and, and uh, Yanya and stuff, and, and yourself. It's, it's, it's a really good opportunity. It's a good opportunity for youngsters as well. There's a lot of youngsters in the crowd on the morning session as well. Yeah, but the only thing I really don't like about it is that it's, the groups are too big. It should be organized maybe or limited, but otherwise the, the atmosphere is quite great in qualifications. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting situation with the way the sport is going at the moment. I mean, we run our events in the UK, myself and Mike at Blockfest, and, and this year we've finally gone to an electronic registration system where we're able to cap the events depending on which climbing wall we're at. So, I mean, it's always a learning curve at the moment with the development of the sport for hold manufacturers, for trainers going into the Olympic season, and obviously for event organizers. Everything is a, a, a which we're just learning every time, every Basi time we make a new event. Basically, climbing is becoming too popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So if you have just joined us, we are live here in Darmstadt, Germany, for the final round. And the climbers are just about to go into their observational period. So let's have a closer look then at boulder number one. And we're going to start with the women. Here we go then. This is filmed earlier on in the week. The closer look in the good lighting of daylight. Uh, you can see there basically, Gaz, uh, number one is, well, all of the problems here are actually quite large, quite long, and have gone for a full tour on the volumes across the slab. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting um, situation as to how people perform on this. And obviously this is where um, fitness levels and uh, energy and skin really become important because um, you know, some of the girls were coming off the boulders, especially off that final block with the double and the triple sort of move, looking at the skin and patting the fingers against the trousers. And obviously they were, they were bleeding. So that's going to be a big issue going into this uh, final. And then also you've got to consider the fitness that some of the girls that compete in lead and uh, people like uh, Jakob Schubert have going into this event, that when they get to here, they're less tired than some of the bolder specific athletes. This is a closer look then at men's number one. Slabby again, giant tour on the simple volumes. The green holds that you can see on the screen there were just the working jugs for the root setting team. They are not part of the boulder. So that's just a slight rotation of what you can see. Basically, it's a, it's a tour on volumes from right to left. With no holds. With, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> marginal amount of holds on the wall. Um, it's really good to see a closer look at those boulders there. Sometimes under the lights it can be a little bit tricky to see what's going on. And we are in for a heady final here, I think. You would say, really, there's a few names in there that don't make that many finals sort of over the last couple of years. But overall, you could argue this is really close to a World Cup finals final. It's definitely a round. strong, strong field. Obviously, um, there's some of the Asian teams that uh, aren't here, but uh, with Chon, missing out on the final you know we've had some of the best in the world that haven't actually got in this final so it's definitely strong and um, with Jakob sitting at the top of the tree that's where my money's money is with the men that's for sure there's uh eddie getting in the way of the cameras obviously <laughs> didn't just take like him long did it just like he said he would do <laughs> straight in amongst it 
We are moving in on to the second boulder then. So this is the boulder observation of women's number two. So let's have a look at that now. White holds, black volumes, a lot crimpier this one. The first one is a real sort of tour on the volumes and women's number two is a really kind of nasty affair. Uh, a couple of slots closer up. You see it higher up on the wall there, sort of a set of rails and the left hand side is really heavily bot blocked and it's going to be a tricky little number at the end there and a very different test to the slab climbing of number one. As always with these finals they really test every element of the climber's ability and I think number two is really going to be testing that finger strength. And something that you can't actually see from the live feed and from the screen is that the starting footholds and that left hand where that thumb is now you can see on the screen those are all non-textured holds. So you're not going to get a right lot of help out of those ones. It's going to make that little jump over to those next crimps um, that much harder. And like you say, Mike, that blocking system that we're just zooming in now is getting tighter and tighter to that block, le top left-hand side. This is men's number two then. Obviously, no lack of volumes once again here at the studio block. These Petzl dual texture volumes. Again, the green jugs in the middle are nothing to do with the boulder. That's just for the root setting purposes. This was earlier on in the week when these were filmed. Some really tight crimps, climbers moving left to right, eventually getting down to, uh, right to left, excuse me, getting down to a really nasty undercut for the left hand out wide. And those volumes are slightly split apart, which means you've got a tiny crimp side pull at the bottom of it and a slight uh, edge, side pull edge up the middle before heading out to some more crimps and a pretty good finish hold, but quite far off the penultimate hold. Some of these, uh, the cheeky zone there, those are knuckled in right into the joint between the volume on the wall and the wall itself. So it's really thin edges involved on there. A blizzard of climbers and officials moving down the map then. This competition does go from right to left. We're moving on. To the far left-hand side for women's number three, the yin and yang volumes. That corner down there is where a lot of dreams were broken <laughs> in the semi-final <laughs> round. A lot of parts. Root setters dreams. Cut in two. Starts on the first, uh, well, starts on the two yin and yang volumes. Big black hold out on the left there is nothing to do with it. A repeat about the green hold, that's not there either. And this one is a lot more of a dynamic affair, we imagine. Again, it's very easy to read these things from the mats. The tweaking of these boulders was going up to the very last second. We trod on the root setter's toes a little bit just during the uh, observation, uh, just before the observation started. And there were seven, seven root setters all trying to make a few crucial decisions out there. I think they're pretty nervous after the semi-final round. And, and there is an addition there to when we actually looked at it, that foothold. Uh, just underneath the zone hold for the last move wasn't there. And this boulder was one of those ones that had a very emotional discussion going on about it. Let's have a closer look then at men's number three in these brand new blocks volumes. No T-nuts on these, just a clean surface. Some really tight volumes, really squeezed up against each other. It's going to be debatable whether they're finger locks or side pulls depending on what school of climbing you come from, really, I think. I think we need a, need a Tom Randall or a Pete Whitaker to tell us that He's one. Crack masters. Up through the volumes, trending left up to the right-hand side then. And uh, yeah, texture and conditions and everything's going to be so, so, so important on these climbs. Pretty good temperatures out there for competing, I would say. Low 20s at the moment, so it's going to get hotter and hotter as the competition goes on. Uh, under the light and as the crowd gets more and more excited, hopefully, hopefully. Well, yeah, you can see it's not too bad, I think, on the mat. I mean, most of the teams are wearing jackets and jumpers and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's not boiling out there at the minute. But, um, yeah, conditions is going are going to change as the lights stay on that wall and stay on those holds. It's going to get hotter and hotter. That two-minute rotation ends then. Graham Alderton, the technical delegate here at the Studio Blockmasters on behalf of the IFSC, moves the climbers on to the fourth boulders. Let's have a closer look then at one of those videos for women's number four. Not quite yet. We're still with the, we're still with the, uh, the live feed from the wall. The uh, left hand side, some of these new holds on this uh, boulder from uh, 360. Some quite amazing shapes. Some of them, there we go. Here, we Here go. we've got the uh, zoom around. The zoom around. The zoom around. <laughs> That's a new technical term. By yeah. the zoom zoom. 
they're really uh, dual texture is one thing but no texture seems to be a bit of a theme here again starting handhold no texture whatsoever just that sort of half circle shape a lot more dynamic this boulder potentially some really good holds on it but they're quite far apart and the body position is just attending towards a much more dynamic boulder to finish off the competition really steep section there's been some tears in that roof over the last few years here at the studio blockmasters nice little inserts in the wall there as well got the local logos cut into the wall pretty nice one of them glowing there in the men's competition so our first look then at men's number four, a big tour on simple volumes, black flat hold holds. I think this is going to be a very interesting boulder as a final boulder for the, for the men. Some of the holds on this are very small, very sharp. They're really tiny little in-cut flat hold crimps. And you can see on the left-hand side of that second simple volume, the vertical ones stacked on top of each other. That is a really small little ratty crimp. It's going to be horrible. Anybody with skin at that point will be able to pull on it. Anybody that without is... Well, we, not there. we definitely saw in the women's competition in the semi-finals, skin was getting lost heavily on the fourth boulder. <laughs> Stasha Gayo is still with us in the studio. Stasha, you've been here just watching that observation. What's your first impressions? Well, the first impression, of course, is that skin will be troubling many of those who don't have um, strong skin. Actually, it's quite a problem because you have to climb all these qualification problems and you basically lo lose most of it there. Then you just finish it off <laughs> in, in semi-finals. I've seen so many girls bleeding and I can't imagine some of them climbing in finals. So here we have a lot of crimps. That's going to be painful. They're long borders. You're already tired. They had only a few hours rest in between. So not much, not very fresh. As you said, that the fitness will just be seen here. Who's uh, who has more endurance and uh, who can keep up the focus? Um, I just want to yeah. ask you. Um, speak. You know, we talk about skin a lot in climbing competitions, but two female climbers who were fighting really hard on the final boulder to no avail, uh, Mia Krampel and Katja Kadic, They had already done enough to get through. They obviously didn't know that they'd done enough. They couldn't see the scores. Obviously. That's a tough situation. Yeah. That, that's just the way it is. In semi-finals, just except in the case if the, the, the screen is just visible and couldn't be hidden, then of course you know what's going on and you don't even try that hard. But in this case, and this is also the World Cup setting, you have no idea what's going on, so you just have to push through because sometimes you don't know what's going to happen after that. It depends on which place you start, of course. You just have to give your all and that's it. Then after that, you realize it was a bit for nothing. But <laughs> if you'd climbed the boulder, then you're satisfied anyhow. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen the, this corner boulder number three, I think, for females. Again, it's, it's really wide between those two yin-yangs. I've seen when they tried the move that they're quite stretched up there. And now imagine putting your both of your feet up. Yeah, I mean, uh, Eddie talked about it. I think he summarized it really well in that little pre-show that we had. But... It is a tough game for the root setters, but surely they couldn't have made the same mistake twice. We'll see. We'll see. We can just blame them, as we said. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the easy, it's, it's... The easiest yeah, game. Yeah, blame it's the easiest setters. to blame them. Of course it is. But they try to make something new because we've seen almost everything now. We've seen all kinds of coordination and you can't really push climbers that quickly. They need time to actually master some new moves. And that means really pushing your body to some severe boundaries of flexibility, strength and coordination, dynamics, whatever. We could, we could see the progress, especially in females. Like when, when the guys started doing coordination moves in World Cups, women couldn't even smell them. And then two years after that, women could master triple jumps, mm. coordination runs and stuff like that. But men were already somewhere else. And then again and again, we're pushing those boundaries as we have to, as it's natural. I think, in a, I think in a way, if, this is yeah. a good event to push, yes, push the ideas and the boundaries well. and, and quip, quip as well. Yeah. And because it's, we can save those and then we can take some lessons from them and then use them yes. in the World Cups That's on the good international field. That's good if you field, have those boulders saved after the competition so people can try it, as it was in Quiff. As I've seen Jim Pope climbing that blue boulder with those pinches on the left that nobody did. Um, 
it's just something we need we need to learn and if we don't have resources to learn it's hard Stasha will be staying with us for the final round here. We'll be bringing her in ever so often just to give us some expert advice on the boulders. <laughs> Stasha, stick around. Gaz Parry and Mike Langley will be taking you through this final round then as the first climbers get announced to us. Melissa Leneve and Evgeny Zazulin come through from the semi-final in sixth position. Just six climbers to get down to our ultimate winner here at the Studio Block Masters. Well, we were climbing in the second round yesterday, Michael, and we were climbing alongside Evgeny at one point. And, I mean, I'm lost for words for this guy. He was just annihilating some of those boulders on the comp wall and then taking a break and going and having a drink of his beer. Yeah, annihilating the boulders and the beer. <laughs> and Alyssa Leneve certainly did annihilate the semi-final round. She put on a brilliant show. She had to work really hard to get through from the qualifiers and ever emotional Melissa Leneve. Let's see what she can do then. Big move up straight away to the left hand and then you get established up high before the big walk across. That's the zone hold you can see up there. Climbers have official starts with four stripes of green tape. The zone hold is marked in pink with the tag and eventually you finish with a green finish hold and Melissa Leneve is getting really well established here. Fantastic slab climber onto these 360 domes. Good start there by Melissa. It looks like it's a very thinking problem as you climb. It's, you can't just stand at the base and, and read the moves. You can see she's climbing quite slowly but nice and controlled. And really interesting working away around that zone hold, trying to work her way down onto that little jib with her left foot on the volume, she's out of there. That's a good first go, I think, from Melissa. First opportunity to have a look at Evgeny on the slab as well then. So these big free simple volumes, I should say, that's the name of the brand. You can just about see it written down some of the volumes. Took him quite a few efforts just to get off the floor, actually. Yeah, it's a slightly dynamic start. We didn't quite see it um, on the live feed, but it's a dynamic move off the start of the uh, off the floor to get into the starting position. Might get to see it this time. Interesting start. Stasha Gayo is still with us. Stasha, a bit of a jump up into the men's here. Interesting starting move. Yeah, I've seen the similar starts in the qualifications as well. It's. Uh, not very common that you can't reach all the starting positions from the floor, but I kind of like it. So it's still not too questionable no, in the I matter of, of starting position. You still get to be stable, you know, but you just have to jump a bit. <laughs> a stable jump. Yeah, stable jump. <laughs> Both climbers on the wall then. Melissa Leneve out first in this finals. Evgeny on the right. Melissa had a huge attempt first time round, but this time is taking it pretty steady to get through, but much quicker to get to this point in the slab. Definitely a bit of extreme walking here on the women's route. Yeah, you have to keep up with the stability all the time. It's not hard to maintain it, and if, especially when you go your first try, you have no idea what's going on, so you just try to guess what position will suit you better and you're limited with time to experiment so much and with energy as well. You have to spare something for later. So it's not that easy to figure out what's a good beta. So I think this will be the last attempt that we're going to see from the climbers. Both back on, we can just see Evgeny on the right-hand side of the screen and Melissa back into the zone again. We've seen her here before. So she can make some progress off this zone. She's trying to get that left foot down onto that volume to the little jib you can see. That's it for Evgeny. Can you just hear the beeps in the background there. That's the five second warning. Melissa Leneve and Evgeny. The Zulin's timed up on the first boulder. First climbers are done out of six. Rotation, not too much troubling the scorers there, especially for Evgeny. Next climbers out then, 
Jesse Karpils, the Austrian superstar, and Vadim Timonov. Another Russian, two Russians made it through to the finals tonight in the men's competition. Stasa Jessica Pills, another one of those athletes who's got so much pedigree. Notoriously a, <laughs> a lead climber, it's competing a lot more now in bouldering. It's kind of pretty interesting to see her progression in bouldering. Well, she was a bouldering competitor back in the youth days. She was one of my biggest competition, actually. In the, back, in the back in the day. Back in the days. I yeah. really miss those days. Says, how old are you, 21? Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were happy, though. It was, it was nice. Yeah, Jessie Jessie has always been skilled in bouldering, but then at one point she just decided to focus more on lead uh, because she was better at it, I think, in the senior category than she was in bouldering. But then she obviously figured out she needed to do some more progress in bouldering if she wants to keep up. And she's just done a pretty good job. Yeah, obviously the uh, the Olympic influence uh, is possibly showing there a little bit, but she's uh, it's undoubtedly that she is not a slouch when it comes to bouldering. Yeah, she's well established on this slab here. She's got a fair amount of weight over on the left leg now. Melissa Lenev couldn't quite get established on the left foot. Jesse Pills really working that body position. Interestingly, a pair of slabs really to start. Good effort from the background there from Vadim Timonov as well. Just pouncing across the slab. It looks like both climbers get to very similar positions where they have to make a dynamic move. Oh, Jesse Pills gets it done. Nice little lean across and palm down there. Right hand Gaston, left hand down. Oh yes, Jessica Pills off to the perfect start. She looks so composed all the way through there. Decent sized crowd here, not phased at all. It's going to be all eyes on Vadim Timonov now then. It's very interesting when you do those kinds of moves that just Jesse did, when you have to lean on one side and just pull and push at the same time. And you have to literally measure how much you have to push off the previous holds in order to get in the proper position and stay in it. And when you do it for the first tr uh, first time, you have no idea what to expect. Happened to me in Innsbruck also on the slab. It's just mm. like you have to go for it and you have no idea what to expect. And well, you, you don't want to push too hard past yeah, the holds yeah, yeah, at the same you, time. You just have to take the optimum amount of power to transfer yourself. And then when you still stand on the wall, you get really surprised. <laughs> they were more surprised than your shell yourself that you're still there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that a lot with so many modern dynamic moves nowadays, though, that there's, there's all the moves are always sort of s slightly on and off. Mm, yeah, yeah. A lot of toe catches, a lot of big leans with catching the toes, timing moves. You know, in Innsbruck, we saw it in the finals, basically 95% of the boulders <laughs> yes. had some sort of timing <laughs> element to yes, them. Yes, 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 especially in the men's category. It was a bit crazy, maybe a bit too much, but uh, it was fun for the audience, I'd say. I think the interesting thing about the, the female one there, that move actually it looked quite easy when jesse did it but it's really committing because you're actually quite nice. high off the ground there um that you know it's well. not a low it's not a low dynamic move it's mm. just a very committing move so maybe the level of it is 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 not so much but um you know mentally it's a, a tough does, one does play a role very one. committing does, move does, does. it's all eyes on Vedin timonov at the moment though with 30 seconds left he's actually had a pretty good effort got close to this next move that's the zone hold just round on the left it's pretty camouflaged because it's the same color as the volume but this is the big move across now with 20 seconds remaining ah oh, sticks it this oh. is looking good now yeah, for the russian pressure time pressure time he does have time though oh. <laughs> so close to fluffing we've his lines on the last move we've there seen so many fails in the last seconds like chloe and quiff i couldn't believe that's happening <laughs> but just when you know you have 10 seconds left, you start panicking. Your, your climbing you ability just goes out the window. Yes, yes, all of yes, a sudden. yes, exactly. That happened to me as well. I started slipping off with my feet and I just do uncontrollable moves. The funny thing is, five seconds on a boulder is actually a reasonable amount of time. Yes, it's. You can too get a lot much. done in five it's seconds. It's too much. But then you're just like, oh my God. I yeah, don't he, was, have time. He, he was super close there. He seemed to go with both hands and he missed completely with the left hand. Yeah. <laughs> and luckily, the right hand was the one that just yes. landed on the hole. Luckily, he's strong enough to help hold it. <laughs> I think he was the most surprised. Yes. Importantly, though, he did get it done. Vedin Timonov gets a top in three attempts there. Mir Krampel and the superstar from the 2018 men's season, Yerne Kruder, on the wall. 
Slovenian team on the wall for this round. And the next round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the clock resets. You hear the beeps in the background. Selection of Slovenians on the wall then. Jone Kruder starts his campaign on this slab. He's going to have heard from the appreciation of the crowd that Vadim Tuminov's just done this boulder. So the pressure's on here a little bit for Yone. Great angle this with both, both climbers visible. Mia just drops that first little jump. Yoni's back on the mat as well. Yeah, Yoni has won this competition before, back in 2017. First, thing, in first reaction of Yoni there is to look at his hands. It's that sort start of stage of a competition. You usually look at your hands when you don't believe what, why did you just slip off? And then you look at them like, why did you do this? <laughs> That's no reason most of the time. Like, you do look at them when you're bleeding, but mostly it's like, why did you do this? Give them a good telling off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't listen to me. Don't do that again. <laughs> I think third attempt for me now on this first move. A dynamic start. That move could be a bit harder for shorter climbers because they're quite stretched in the start, so they can't really push off. But this way could work, yeah. That looks a little bit more secure. Sticks the move that time, Mia Krampel. We have seen a top on this boulder from Jesse Pills. No top, unfortunately, for the first climber around. Friendship's done, Melissa Leneve. Let's see what Mia makes of this next section. A really pair of slow technical boulders to start proceedings here. This is live for the Studio Blockmasters Grand Final. For this transfer you need a lot of core power, a lot of stability, static strength. It's one of those boulders that does suck a lot of time as well. Only just four minutes obviously to climb each boulder. Nice little cross through now though. And you're tense all the time, so you can't even really rest properly in the boulder. Really working that right thumb on the pinch. See it just adjusting every single time she makes the, the switch. Tries to put her foot down. Yes. Very, very nicely done there. Let's Get down that. into the position now for this very committing move. Down into the palm and into the shoulder for the right hand. No, oh, no, 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 no. Seemingly not enough commitment into that move. Slight bit of inexperience there, potentially. For me, uh, just didn't commit like Jesse did to the palm down and the roll over. I think she wanted to do it, but then in the middle of the move, she just decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of stalled out halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, it's a terrible feeling when, <laughs> when you have a move in front of you and there's like more than one method and. You start off with one and then suddenly move to another yes. and then you're like, oh no. It's worse. I've made a mistake. Yes. <laughs> Even if you committed to the odd one, it would be better than just switching it in the, in the middle. One of the superstars of this event then, Yone Crew, the previous winner, like we just said, struggling at the moment on the slab here. This could be an early upset for Yone. Got some work to do here with 22 seconds remaining. Both climbers quite high up on the wall now. This is going to be the attempt realistically for both of them. Huge moment here already in the studio block final. Yone Kruder, really good technique for him. Still got time, it's his five seconds. The beeps go, Yone's just gonna have to fly for it. Hits it with two nice. hands and gets it done. Good one, Big good moment one. on the buzzer there for Yone Kruder. His ability just seemed to double as soon as he got to about 10 seconds left there. Unfortunately, not enough for Mia Krampel. Got to the slab lean over again, but ran out of time. Big moment there in the men's competition. I've said it before, you can't win a competition on the first bowl. You can go a long way to losing it. Yerne Kruder did well there just to keep it together with 10 seconds left. So this is the second duo of Slovenian competitors. Andrzej? And catch a carrick. Oh, 
I wonder if the um, Slovenian team are talking to each other in the back, giving each other beta. Oh, they do. They do. A lot. Even when we were in finals, like, separate men and women, and then Jarni talks to me all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> always. <laughs> I think Yone talks to himself a lot as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he has problems with that. <laughs> yeah, but often it happens in competitions that volunteers come like, don't talk, don't talk. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we continue, of course. Katja Kadic, you can see the tape on the end of the left fingers there. She was one who was really suffering on at least boulder number three and four earlier. Good progress for her at the moment. And Angie, that was a good just try. out of shot actually. We'll try and bring you that. Just had a good attempt across the slab, but we're focusing on Katja Kajic for now. Good view up high on the wall. Just trying to figure out what she needs to do here. She really needs her hands around the other way. A lot easier said than done. She needs to move her feet and her hips. Not like that. No. Couldn't quite hold that barn door as that right foot came off. But like you said, Mike, I think her hands were the wrong way around for the previous competitors. Also, you need to go like step by step. If you make wide moves with your legs, you're risking getting out of balance and control. Yeah, leave it, leaving that right foot behind, I mm. think, was a bit of a mistake there for her, yeah. And you get a swing and then you're off. The moment you just get more dynamics. Good little view of the start move for the men's number one boulder here at Studio Blockmasters. Yeah, we get to focus on Andrzej Perhatch, 21 years old. We actually did a bit of climbing with him back in February in London. Yeah, that was a big session with Andrzej, which was really time. interesting. He Helps was over to visit Jim Pope, came along and tested some boulders for us at a competition. That was nice that time from Andrzej. Kaji Kaji is up high as well. Looks like Andrzej Perhatch should have this in the bag. Nicely done. He is very good on that style, on the volumes. Really good at dynamic movement. Andrzej is off to a good start. Pretty sure we're seeing a lot more of him this season. On the other hand, Catch Kajit has her hands around the wrong way a little bit again. She is looking at her skin, and probably rightly so, because there's a lot of tape going on there. I think they're hurting as well. <laughs> <laughs> Asks for the brushes, but at the moment, that brushing those holds is not going to be the answer. The answer's really getting them the other way around. She needs to hold the dish and then cross through to the insert inside the dish. That's been the previous sequence. Yeah, real technical body position boulder this one in the women's as well. After a fierce start. So well and good to say we need the hands around the right way, but you've got to get the body in the right position to actually achieve that. Let's have a closer look then. Yeah. She hesitates because she thinks her Feet would go wrong way. Now she should go back. The, yeah, the toe hook on the right hand side that's holding oh. her back a little bit hops across this time. This could work for Catcher here. She can get the body over to the left hand side now. Really got to push it out with 10 seconds left though. It's not going to be enough. It's a good effort. Good effort from Catcher there. Same result as Mia Crampel. Timed out on the slab. Very slow boulder, women's number one. Realistically, you only got a couple of attempts in your four minute time slot. Next two climbers out. First climber for the females, Luka Rakovic. It's Luchka, actually. Lu Lu Luchka. Luchka. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Luchka. You got an advantage, you live there. <laughs> yeah, I know them. <laughs> 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 All your mates. <laughs> yes or no then on this boulder for Luch Luchka? Luchka, huh? depends. I haven't seen her climb this style for a while. I don't know. I can't say until I see her up there. 17 years old. Still a youngster. Yep. Amazing to see her in this sort of position on the Blockmasters. It's a good start to her season. 
She has good hip movement. She, her style resembles a bit of funny because she's uh, skinny, long legs, you know, good, good feeling about the posture and as you can see already. In the background, Ukrainian superstar Sergei Tepishko, one of the biggest guys on the scene. Yeah, he's been 30 like quite years old. struggling with his size, I think. Yeah, some you win some, you lose some when you're that tall, yeah. I think. Oh, that's a yeah, nice, yeah, uh, yeah, nice dropped into that position really well. Sergei Tepishko off to a really good start here. Oh, he's absolutely cruising that top shank. Doesn't need to jump at all, just a little lean across. Perfect start for him. Super experienced. Means we get to focus on Luchka. No, again, same. Went, went again for that high hold instead of dropping down to the palm and the shoulder that we saw earlier on. This is a problem of actually wanting, cons consciously wanting to skip the move, the risky move that you have to do. So you want to try to fake it, but you can't because it's made that way that you can't fake it. Yeah, it's one thing trying to find a method that works naturally, but you've also got to understand that the root setters probably Try know it. what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've probably pro tried it that way, <laughs> left hand, right hand, backwards, yeah. forwards, facing out, upside Everything. down. And if she probably could see the chalk on it, so she's aware that that method is the one. Mm. Just that, yeah, she doesn't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, with a boulder that's actually this long to climb, it's risky trying things that might not work. Yeah. Easier said to done. Obviously, these guys did have a two-minute observation, but it's the first time they've climbed on these boulders. See what she can do this time. As more and more climbers fail on this boulder, Jessica Pills' ascent is looking more impressive. She's also got tape as well. I'm guessing a few holes or quite bad skin on those fingers, two fingers taped. This is where she needs to get the body across to the left-hand side. She's relatively stable there, but needs to step down onto a little jib on the left there. She's focusing on the hands at the moment, but she is getting into a much better body position, really clamping down. All climbers have pretty much got to this position now, but it's this next release and commitment out to the left is what makes or breaks this boulder. No, no, no. This is, again, the same thing at the half. <laughs> instantly knew that she'd gone the wrong way, basically. You could see it in her eyes. She was just focusing on that top hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 seconds on the clock. I think it's going to be, it's definitely going to be the last attempt, whether she actually gets attempts on that dynamic move. We shall see. I think even if she doesn't find a top here, this goes for Kasia Kajic as well. Definitely a, a real process of learning on this boulder, I think, going into the season. Mm. That is going to be it for Luchka. <laughs> on to the final rotation of the first boulders already. We talked to about her a lot already. And the next guy out, Jakob Schubert. Both guys come out in the top spot. Both arguably the best climbers of their generation currently. Wonder how big the trophy cabinet would be if they both combined their silverware. <laughs> Two bedroom <laughs> flat maybe, an apartment block. Just for the trophies. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. So Jessica Peel's leading the way at the moment in the women's competition. We have a quick top for her on women's number one. It's actually a flash for her. Sergei Dpishko flashed it as well on men's number one. Jakob is climbing in Cobras. That's interesting. Cobras being his shoes rather than a pair of snakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who's not a shoe aficionado out there. No, because I've never seen anybody climbing in Cobra shoes on well, comps. We'll come Boring. onto that in a second as we focus just on Yanya Gambra on this top section. Goes again, left hand, tried to recalculate halfway through. A rare mistake there from Yanya Gambra. I think they've observed it the same way. The Slovenian team yeah, have been yeah, talking yeah. together. Yes, and uh, many times they make this mistake that they observe the boat the wrong way. 
and then everybody makes the same mistake. Some may correct it, some just may not, and they keep trying the same thing. So just focusing back on that conversation about what shoes Jakob Schubert wear. I think this is possibly the softest shoe that he's got in his bag. <laughs> well, we've <laughs> talked a lot about <laughs> the, the sort of pre-season and using this event as a training event. It's a, it's a really good opportunity for to try out something a bit different on the shoe front as well. I mean, I'm guessing he wouldn't have just got those straight out of the shop and tried them on. He would have given them a good run around the training gym. You can just about spy the leg injury for Yanya Garbrecht that she picked up in the semi-final rounds earlier on. Big cut down on her left leg. This time then surely for Yanya Garbrecht. Will she make the same mistake twice or will she commit to this rollover and join Jesse Pills with one top? She won't join her at the top of the leaderboard though because she hasn't flashed it this time. You can see the eyes moving down left and falls off again. What is it about this competition that Jan Jugambrek can't get along with? She keeps falling off. Yeah. Some comps are cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Jakob back on. Last man to climb on this boulder in this rotation. He changed the shoes. <laughs> yeah, he sat down on the mat just after he came off the previous go and he's gone back to his trusty, trusty boots. Yeah, when, when you're at this level of competition, you really have to know your shoes. You have to know your weapons. Well, he's wearing the Sportiva Solutions there. Let's see if that's going to be the solution to his woes on this slab. Not looking too comfortable up there at the moment, it has to be said. Yanni Garbrit, on the other hand, hopefully we can just check her out. She's up for a third attempt. She's back on the wall. One minute left. It'll be a big upset here if Yanni Garbrit doesn't find a top. Only climbing to top all four boulders in the semi-final round. This time, no mistakes. Slight fumble with the left hand as it hit the hole, but managed to control it. And an easy top in the end for Yanya. Smile to the crowd, but ultimately, I think she's going to be a little bit disappointed with that. It's very interesting what you said earlier, Stasha, about them obviously reading together, and it did look like that, that they've yeah. read that move together and all came up with the wrong solution. But Yanya there probably showing your experience and mixing it up and committing yeah, to the left hand yeah, low. In bouldering you can still correct that mistake but it really often happens in lead climbing that they read a section totally completely wrong and many of them fall off in that section well, because what of that. I think really helped you, uh, Yanya there was she managed to get through that bottom section a lot quicker than yes. some of the athletes so yes. she could have three really good goes. Unfortunately Jakob Schubert Potentially the favourite here, can't find a top. Sergei Tepishko leads the way with a flash. Andrzej Perhatch got it done as well. So did Vadim Timonov and Jode Kruder. It's only the big Russian Evgeny and Jakob couldn't find a top there. That's the current standing as we are then, moving into the second boulder. Or possibly crucially going forward, they didn't get the zone either. Yeah, it could be very important. You can see the green box on this screen if it's a completed green square. That is a successful attempt on that climb. That's the top. It's half a square. That's just the zone hold. You can see that down there with Luchka and the others. The zone secured. And then you get down to the end of the table. One T, one top, one Z, one zone. And the number of attempts it took to get to those tops and zones. Moving on then, second boulders. First climbers are out. Melissa Leneve. And Evgeny Azulin. <laughs> She's always wearing a, spy on a, a smile, Mel, in these sort of situations. She just loves it. It's, uh, she must be so happy, like, still competing on these events. Obviously retired from the international scene and the World Cups, but we always see her back for these one-off events, and she really does enjoy them. A lifer as we say. <laughs> I think she's under some special dose of adrenaline right now. <laughs> like, well, I saw her after after semi-finals. She, she just couldn't calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I had too much coffee. I don't think that's coffee, honey. <laughs> First look at then at men's number two section of volumes. He's going to be working his way up to sort of a split volume. It's got a tiny edge on it. Down leftwards, down to some blocked crimps, crimps that are right up against the edge of the volumes. Evgeny, as he decided on a few of the moves in the semi final round, doesn't need them. He's actually been competing since 2006, so there's no shortage of uh, experience here for Evgeny. 
He's looking very, very comfortable currently on men's number two. Nice drop knee move. That was a really good effort. That left foot just blew off that drop knee. He's we <laughs> predicted it will be painful. I think it that's is. just warmed his fingers up. <laughs> <laughs> a few small holds on that boulder. Looks like Melissa Lineva is going in for the shoe change as well. Start to see this more and more competitors bringing out two pairs. Something softer and something a bit better for the downturns. Yeah, it looks like she's switching it up to a slightly softer shoe there. Sometimes an opportunity to take a bit of a rest, actually take your mind off what you've got to do. Just take a moment, refocus. That's us in the studio at the bottom of the screen there. Gaz Parry and Stash Gear in the <laughs> on the wings. Your wingman and wing lady. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa back on. The move she's been struggling with. Yeah, yeah, firing up to a crimp. She's actually opting not to stand on the uh, white foothold on the left foot. It's a completely smooth foothold at the moment. Same with the right as well. There's no texture on either of those starting footholds. And you could see that as she went up to that hold, that right foot just shoots off. That's that, Those kind of holds, I mean, I have everything against that. <laughs> like I've said it so many times about two sharp holds, like the structure that just rips your skin apart and those slippery ones that literally want to trick you and, and it, it's evil, that's what I see. You, you see, you just can't stand on those. I actually have to agree with them. I'm a personal hatred of no texture holds. Yeah. My, some of my Route 8 team back in London will know that. <laughs> and some of them love it. So, yeah. And Route Setters love them. Because um, it, it seems like they like to see us suffer <laughs> those. But it's, it's really There's no point brushing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to find any texture underneath that rubber. Yeah, you can spit and polish it. You want it, more rubber on it, more <laughs> rubber. Evgeny Zazulin has had a couple of good goes at the moment on these volumes, just struggling to go up to the penultimate crimp with 35 seconds left. Neva Climber doing that well at the moment on these boulders. Again, he's made a reasonable process, but it looks like he's quite a long way from that top move. But he's got the sequence down, that's for sure. Let's hope these feet, is this left foot that zings off, right foot's bad as well, but is it drop knee? No, he's not going for the drop knee this time. Oh, straight for the top wow. hold, skipping the last move of the boulder. He's psyched by that, and so is the crowd. If in doubt, smash it out. Evgeny Zazulin didn't like the drop knee to the crib and just Gave it maximum to the finish. Melissa Leneve unfortunately walks away with no top. No real progress at all, actually, unfortunately. Crowd appreciated that one. Always a good moment when someone skips a hold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not for Ruth Sellers, though. <laughs> they don't like that. <laughs> Usually Jan Hoer is the one who just tries to skip everything and hack his way, his way to the top. I wonder how other girls will find their way through this. Yeah, start. Melissa Lanelli is obviously a, a very, very strong athlete on good form at the moment as well and really couldn't get on with that start as well. But Jessica Pills coming out next is leading the way with a flash on women's number one. So in some ways she's got her way off to a dream start. So the pressure's piled on her a little bit to keep that up. Especially with Yanya Garnbrett just behind her. Fadin Timonov, second Russian out. See if what he does. Will he go to the crimp? Will he just jump to the finish? Maybe he won't even get off the ground. Let's have a look. Mm, Hard nice. pop up to a, a really blocked crimp there. I reckon that move will get done. Well, one way is maybe to try and switch your feet mm. on the volume on the left. I could do it, but... No. Valim Timonov showing really good finger strength here, quite happy on the smaller edges, just got to work his way through this volume, he's just shuffling a little bit, let's see what he can do on this next section, really tight drop knee, oh nice style here from Valim Timonov, he should find a top, he's looking a little bit nervous in the jump, 
goes for it, gets it done. This guy likes to hang it out a little yeah, bit on the last moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's strong, he's strong. I've been following him on Instagram for quite a while and he's amazing, really. He just I think that the rest of the yeah. Instagram climbing world have been following him as well. He's <laughs> insanely strong, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's showing some good form at the start of this season with his, with his uh, flash there. It's a good effort. Let's focus on Jessica Pilsen and this first move that Melissa Leneve couldn't really do. Suggestions here in the commentary box that you're better off swapping feet on the left-hand side and going off your right foot on that left-hand volume up to the slot to give you a better body position and leaning off that left hand a little bit more. At the moment, the momentum is taking you away from the crimps and leftwards. That's a really tiny crimp, that right hand that it's got to go to. And it's obviously blocked as well, so it's really hard to hit it accurate. No. You could fall off that move all day, I think. Yeah, now she'll try with maybe with this one. She's trying things, but she's still unsure. I think what's leading them down that path at the moment is the right foot is so big. Yeah. That they've got a lot of weight on it and don't really want to take the weight off that foot. Yeah. You've got to commit to a potentially harder version to get it done, though. But she tried switching feet, but like two times, but she probably doesn't feel comfortable. I don't know what they thought. But I think she keeps thinking about making the switch or taking the previous go. She took the right leg off two times and then put it back on again. But I mean, now she's used so many goes on this move. Yeah. You, might, you just try it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not the, the moment wasting she's just, anything. Yeah, she's just going up the same street and not really getting anywhere. It's hitting the hold every yeah. time. But Well, I think that's because she's basically trying to hit a slot and a slot's a <laughs> very low percentage in their nature. And even with the same technique, there's no real telling when you're gonna when you're gonna dial into it. I have no further comments on this ball. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like th there's always one ball that people cannot start on. Maybe one person can. It's it's sad. It's sad. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting though because there is this obviously there's a lot of comments nowadays with with all these dynamic boulders and there's a lot of people out there that want to see something that is i know it's the first move but they want to see hard moves hard moves that people are challenged time and time again and uh, you know this is the first climber on this boulder so we've got quite a lot of climbers come to see it come to try it later on and uh yeah we well. shall see what it's like when somebody strong gets on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who knows Jessica Pills walks off the mat then, shaking her head. Same as Melissa Leneve, couldn't find anything there. That might be the theme for a little while, potentially. Hopefully not. That's the scores as they stand on the left-hand side of the screen. Then Jessica Pills still remains at the top of the pack. No zone for her on the second one. Just that top on number one. Quick top it was too. Vadim Timonov, two tops already for him. I think that could be a bit of a sh kind of bit of a theme here. I think we're going to see an, a number of tops here on men's number two, but that does pile the pressure on the athletes coming out later on. They would know by now, just judging by how quickly people have come back and the applause from the crowd that men's number two is getting done. Really piles the pressure on. Stasha, when you've been in that situation, you know something's been done. Is it hard to, to kind of change your mindset because you know that someone else has done it or do you just focus on the boulder? Depends. Depends what my previous mindset was. If I'm, if I'm doing well in the competition, it doesn't bother me at all. It just motivates me even more to just prove myself again as well. But if I'm not doing well, then it's just another dose of pressure. But I like starting first, and if I'm lucky to be on the edge <laughs> and to be sixth, that's the most perfect position you can get. Interesting. In a minute, we'll focus on Mia Krampel, just as we look at Yone Kruder at the moment. There she is. She did go off the right foot yes. on the left-hand volume there, did use the technique that we were talking about, and is looking really strong on these crimps right now. She's a true crimper, yep. She's always been good at those. Kaz Parry, you said you wanted to see somebody strong coming out on women's number two, yes. certainly getting it now. Big last move. 
Going to have to commit, I think, a little bit. It's beyond the lock. Oh, big slip on the left hand, but it's so strong on the crimps on the right. Just maintains it, keeps locking it down. Well, I said it's beyond the lock, but it's definitely not. She's just demonstrated some severe, deep locking strength there on those crimps. That was really impressive. Awesome moment there from Mia Cranfield from the Slovenian team. Stash, you obviously climbed with her. You said she's a crimper. That was a. She's a crimper, and she's been doing one arm pull ups for, I think, more than five years now. She was 14 when she was just doing them so easily. We were shocked. Everybody was like, wow, Mia. <laughs> so that's where it comes from, I suppose. <laughs> Not weak. <laughs> Not at all. All eyes on the big man then, Yone Kruder. Interesting for Yone. He had such a big season last year, so much emotion all the way through the year. Ended up missing out on the actual World Championships finals in the end by one place in Innsbruck. Can he back it up in 2019? Come out guns blazing again. So many stories got to play out this year at the World Cups. It's going to be really rough this year because everybody's mostly focused on Tokyo. And of course, getting scores from all the World Cups in case they don't qualify in Tokyo, so they can go to Toulouse. And it puts additional pressure, that's why many big names are not here, mm. after all. And they're sparing themselves for mining and of course, and for the beginning of the season. If you want a breakdown of how it's going to work to get to the Olympics, check the semi-final stream for earlier on today. Kaz Parry gave a detailed rundown of exactly how that's going to work. Sounds simple in principle, but there's a lot of moving parts to it. A lot of decisions for the teams to make, a lot of decisions for the coaches to make, the individuals involved, funding bodies, everything. It's a big, big year in competition climbing. And this is a big moment for Yone. He run the clock down a lot on the first boulder. He's now got just 30 seconds on a boulder that's already seen a couple of tops. Yeah, he certainly needs to move fast. And this is not the fastest boulder either. It's got quite a lot of movements on it. It's got quite a lot of holds, choices, footholds. Yeah, the clue is going to run out of time here. Seven seconds remaining. Completely out of time, unfortunately. Yerne not quite managing to find a method that works for him. So he comes away empty-handed, really, from that boulder. Yeah, interesting. Interesting already here in the both the men's and the women's competition. Tops coming relatively often on different boulders from different people. <laughs> a proper competition. Yes, yes that's what I add. Those kinds of finals are my favorite. Like, full of turnovers, you never know until the end what's going to happen. Anjay and Katya next then. What's a good quick top for Anjay on men's number one? Is Katya a crimper? She's not a specific crimper, no. And her skin is bad, so. That certainly doesn't help on the crimps. <laughs> Potentially going to be a painful experience, this one for her. Let's see what method she chooses through this first move. There's the foot swap we were talking about. Yeah, straight into that right foot swap. Still same result, unfortunately. The stab into the blocked hold. Anjay then on the right hand side did really well on the sort of slabby, quite similar style number one boulder. Now he's onto some edges, try and get his teeth into them a little bit more. Flying up this early section here, Anjay Perhatch. Goes to the crimp, oh, this guy's on form. Looks like he's gonna find a really quick top here unless something drastically goes wrong on this top move. Easily done. I really hope he does well in the World Cups this year. This yeah, he's just really got a really good improvement in the past year. Yeah, really quick gains. Yeah. Yeah, he looked very solid on that, as he did on the first block as well. He looked quite at home on the on the smears and the, and the slabby style. And we saw that when we were climbing with him in London as well. But obviously, when he got onto the crimps there as well, on boulder number two, he still looked pretty comfortable. A very rounded climber. Another go for catcher. 
See if she goes for the foot swap again or just left foot. Going mm. with the right hand. Interesting. Trying it, trying different methods. See her shaking off the fingers there. I think that is burning significantly in the tips, unfortunately. You haven't really got too much hope when you're holding on to a hold that's got no texture with tape on your fingers. <laughs> this, this climbing is a friction based sport. Yes. And you're not putting yes. yourself in a great yes. position there, unfortunately. Oh. I, I've, I've just been thinking what we should do about the no texture holds. You can't step on it with your shoes. You can't be bare barefoot would be the best. But <laughs> rules forbid yeah. it. So <laughs> I was just Maybe a hole in your shoe. Yeah. You or, a hole in your shoe? or you just get some kind of uh, clothing under it. That can <laughs> or a leather. Leather would be good. You know? Or maybe you go old school like they used to do in the UK back in the day. They used to put socks over the over <laughs> the boots but and you socks get would better grip on, on wet rock. <laughs> I don't know. Socks Maybe wet socks. socks. Wet socks might work. Wet socks. I'd, I'd still go for leather. Or leather. Turned over leather. Yeah. <laughs> you just wear the shoe upside down, maybe. <gasps> yeah. Not forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll send that design idea to Nathan at uh, Scarpa yes, and see what he comes yes, up with. Yes, yes, <laughs> Maybe Scarpa Air would do good on this one because it can, like, embrace the hold, yeah. go over it. Still with the same attempt, same left foot on the volume, right foot on the starting hold. It's one of those interesting situations in a final where you have one side of the final this time in the men's that's a quite a quick boulder with relatively large amount of tops in the women's boulder on this occasion where you can't really get off the ground crowd appreciating the effort here though from catch Kajic. goes for the foot swap come on yes heel could work yes, yes. nice done used a left heel there to get through that section Certainly not over though, hits that front three fingers, gets it into the locked crimp now. There is two holds on that volume. We saw from Mia Kremple just using the lower one. Yeah. Oh, fade out at the top. She used a lot of energy on that bottom move. Guard that was a good effort. The fingers. Good effort there, that was a good boulder to see. That was like two super hard moves to get the zone. But I'm glad we have uh, those solutions. <laughs> <laughs> up because if the weren't, that weren't the case, that would be bad. With, uh, with that style of bowler, this is why the, the dynamic bowlers have come so strong into the into the competition nowadays, because the, the, the climber can learn so quickly through through a few minutes, whereas on a bowler like that, it comes down to pure, pure strength. Power, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. such a fine line. Really <laughs> hard thing for the root setters to get right. Sergei Tepishko then going in to the men's competition, first place after the first boulder, down in fourth at the moment. And Luchka Rakovic. 17 years old. Good effort making it into this final. It's going to be boding well for the season ahead. Yeah, no top for her on women's number one. See what she can make of this first move. Trying it the standard way. Left foot, right foot. Sergi is on board. Into the split volumes there. With a little spacing, enough to get a crimp on. Got to get out to that zone to be able to switch. Right hand, that's it. This is looking quite good. Makes this top move. So Evgeny just launching it, but it looks like Sergei's going to go oh. into the drop knee and a big rip off the crimps there. See the three of us focused in the studio, just looking above our camera position at the big screen. We are just off to the side of the competition wall here. We are live here at the studio block masters in Darmstadt, Germany biggest pre-season event, the 2019 season, just two weeks away from the start of the bouldering World Cup season. A really interesting weekend it's been so far. Let's see what method Luca chooses this time. She's gonna mix it up, she's gonna swap feet.
back into the start position. Still going for that dead point with the right hand, and you can see that right foot just consistently coming off that right foothold with no texture. There's just nothing to keep the foot on. Sergi back on for his next attempt. He, uh, as soon as he came off that previous go, pinged off, he reached down, got some liquid chalk out. Get that on the fingers. Good and solid, out to the zone, flips that right hand. Yeah, this is where he got to on the previous attempt. A little fade out on the right arm there just as he went to that. And he's quite low on that right hand volume. That drop knee method for the big guys really seems to be a hard body position to get into. That's why Evgeny ended up just launching it for that top hold. Body didn't really fit into the space on offer there. It's hard when you're that tall. Oh, I have loads of sympathy with tall people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm one of the tallest also in the female circuit, and sometimes it's really hard to fit in, in many positions. <laughs> you just have to use 10 times more power of your core in order to just maintain one simple position. <laughs> simple, yeah. Definitely as a taller climber myself, I think we could discuss the benefits of short and tall climbers all night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always, always. Luchka at the meantime. Is really struggling as we've seen for a number of athletes now on that first move. It's like disappointing not to see the climbers really progress on that boulder. Apart from Mia Krampel, who just locked down the crimps, no worries. Sergei Topishko this time with 20 seconds remaining. He's actually got that right hand really low at the moment. It's making the gap for him to get into quite small. Oh that God. volume is the same width all the way up. I think he's just got to bump that hand up. He is out of time. Sergei Topishko was in the lead going into this second boulder, that is not going to help his competition at all. That's going to drop him down a little bit. Didn't do too well on that boulder. Really interesting. Someone like Andrzej just before him absolutely walked it. So he okay, just couldn't get into the right body positions, unfortunately for him. Final pair out on the last boulder. As you can see them there coming out the isolation zone behind the studio block flag. Gany Garmbrit and Jakob Schubert. Jakob Schubert in last position at the moment. I'd like to think that this is a block that would suit Jakob. It's quite climbing, you know, it had, does have holds on. It's not so much friction as we saw on the first boulder. Um, so, yeah, my money's on him doing this one. Jan de Gambra is down in fair position at the moment. Very early days to see exactly what's going on, but this boulder has been topped by Mia Krampel. She knows she has to do it quickly. Front on there for Yannick oh, Albrecht. Okay, that's her. That's one way of doing it. strength. <laughs> Just flicking around between these crimps here, Yanya. Overly strong on these moves. Can she finish it off? Can't rush this top move, however. Just pushing towards the top now, Yanya Albrecht, the favourite for this event. Absolutely. That's her style. That's really, really, really her Just style. Just overly strong, as Stasha said. <laughs> That was that. <laughs> Didn't last very long. Let's have a look at Jakob Schubert sub, then. Sub 45 second boulder. Jakob uh, making good progress. Now he knows he's got to get this shoulder. He's got that toe up with the right foot to allow him to get out to the zone. He's on the zone, flips the right hand. Look how bad that crimp is on the left. It's terrible. Oh Front God. three, His hard to watch. Just, oh, just a slip on both hands. But We've seen a few people slip on that left foot. It must be really poor. Is this left volume on the matching structure? No texture. No texture, yeah. yeah. That's what it's I your thought. favorite style. Oh, yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, on the, you can see on the far left, the lower one of the two is no texture on the top where it says Petzl. The little crimp above is a, is a handhold in fear, but nobody's really using it to get themselves across. So quite happy on the volumes to go right up to the zone hold. Deciding not, they don't need that one. I wonder who'll be the first person to bring out the no texture gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, um, I don't think you'd be visiting, would you? No, no. ever, <laughs> ever, ever. Maybe I'll go training because if, if things become too evil. It'd yeah. be good for the skin. That's true, but I prefer wooden holds over plastic ones, you know. Exactly. No <laughs> texture gym. <laughs> or a, a wood, wooden World Cup. I was having a very interesting conversation oh, yeah. with the Swiss team on Friday night. We'll come back to that in a minute because let's focus on Jakob Schubert. 
one of the favourites for this competition, really struggled on the first boulder. Now he's into a better position. Front two fingers on the zone hold this time. He's really working hard here, Jakob. Got the volume quite low on the right. He's just trying to get that body position up to the crimp. Oh. Snares it, but got too much rotation on the body. Jakob Schubert struggling a little bit here. Yeah, he's definitely having a hard time of it at the moment in this first half of the semi-final here at Studio Block. So the conversation we were having with the Swiss team was there's a lot of talk in route setting, a lot of talk amongst competitors about having uh, holds deteriorate through the round due to the material and how the heat and the chalk and everything else builds up on yeah. the holds and how plastic reacts to that level of climbing. And in theory, maybe an entire wooden competition might be better. Yes, 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 I agree. For a level playing field, Absolutely. yeah. Because the condition changes if you start one of the first ones or if you're the last. It's, it's not the same for everyone. It's a really, uh, really long conversation. Let's just focus back on Jakob for a minute because he needs this Jakob Schubert. Oh, that this time is better. Drop need much yeah. better. Looks like he's going to get it in the bag and brings himself back into play here. Jakob Schubert gets it done. He really needed that. I, I mean, I, I'm, I definitely do agree with that to an extent from a, a route setter's perspective and from actually running events. Um, but at the end of the day, in this situation here, you've had all the people come out struggle on the boulders, you've got all the temperature, you've got the deterioration of the holds, and Yanya comes out and walks up the I boulder. Think, uh, realistically, you know, I think it's, it's more relevant for a qualification round if you've got, like, Meiring is going to be one of the biggest yes, World Cups yes, of all time. Yes, yes, I, yes. I mean, I can't remember the number, it's like over 100. It's uh, 101 women, and I don't think that there's been so many. Maybe Munich last year. Yeah, yeah. I think Munich, yeah. Anyway, that's another long conversation. Let's do a podcast yeah. after this. That is where we stand. <laughs> we could talk for we hours. We could talk all day about I'm 46 that. years old. I don't know what a podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we stand then, Yanni Gombrit in the women's competition. The only climber with two tops on the board. Had to work for them, though, in four attempts. Two zones to a name, obviously, with those two tops. Mia Krampel after that fine top on women's number two. Jesse Peel's just behind there. It's wide open at the moment. Onto the third boulders then, down to the left-hand side of the wall. It's a long way from the ISO. Get them warmed up. Quick jog in. Stasha, were you ever one of those climbers who just jogged in, or you prefer the, the slow walk? Ah, depends. I am on this depends one. how many boulders there are to walk past that you haven't <laughs> been on yet. <laughs> and this Get one. Get a sneaky look. Yeah, and this one, hmm. Probably slow. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go then. We, uh, Stasha Go next to us. Professional athlete. She's talking a lot about this women's number one. And we did discuss men's number uh, not women's three. one. Three, excuse <laughs> yes. me. And Evgeny on three as well. Root setters were tweaking men's three right to the last second. Melissa Neva gives a wry smile as she knows what she's gotta do here. Dynamic move out of the corner. She is into the corner and starts the boulder. Effectively, that's not what we saw in the men's competition, but it's a really committing spin out the corner now for Melissa Lenevi. Yeah. A real modern move. Can she drop into it or is she yes. going to go dynamically? Does just try and drop it? You have to drop it, obviously, because there are two volumes below. So, and the hold is too bad for you to actually make that kind of spin. It's going to be a drop down and then a push out to the right to the yes. zone hold and then yes. get dancing with the feet. Yes, and in this corner there's always a spin, like there hasn't been a Studio Block Masters without at least one spin. The on Studio one. Block spin. Yes, also on trainings. I was here with the German national team a month ago, I think, on their uh, national comp uh, simulation and there was a spin. It was a male boulder and I took like half an hour to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just massive. Melissa Leneve just pleasing the judges there, getting the yes. hands to control, drops down nicely onto the foot that time. That's a nice little dynamic move, but it's followed by a second dynamic move. This is a good angle now. You see that that right-hand foothold that she needs to end up on is actually around the corner. And quite blind, I can imagine. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that move. Evgeny, they're a big Russian into these cracks. Just holding them as slopers at the moment. Shoulders really working hard there. This guy is so, so strong, it is unreal. 
big move to finish then between a pair of side poles. That might be the method. I don't think so. I think it's going to be slow. Be slow. Yeah. slow would work better. Yeah, it looks like that left foot needs to be a little bit higher mm. on the crack that he had there. He just wasn't going to be able to get the match and stay in balance, I think. Mel's back on now in the corner. Block three. She's got the first move. She knows what to do. Easy through there now. Maybe you have to swing and then uh, hmm, too short for that. That seems weird. Maybe you have to jump with your left of this one and then just somehow land on the right around the corner. I think Evgeny might be bleeding out of one of his tips there. He seems to be wiping something on his shirt. I'm sure the delegates here will have a quick look to see if that's okay. Don't seem to be going in for any tape, so he must be all right. Cracks. Hmm. Never been that good at those. <laughs> <laughs> you need to spend some time in England. I'm not British. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just get out of the swing. You maybe have to do a double hop. Yeah, double hop so. with the right foot. Yeah. yeah. This time then for Evgeny. Zulin, he's been up at this point already. So much shoulder power required on those holds. He's Got better this time. Stabilize here, though. Do something with the left foot, but those volumes are blocked by one another, so it's really hard to get the feet where you want them. I don't think uh, drop me would work. Probably not. Interesting there, Melissa Leneve, just final go, a little step through method that could work as well potentially. Mm. We'll see. Bottom number three over for that pair. Nice close-up of a couple of guys in the crowd. <laughs> Focused. Good crowd there. Strong crowd, yeah. Good scenes here at Studio Block. Long walk back to isolation. That's how big that competition <laughs> wall is. That is a long, lonely walk. Yeah. The walk of shame. <laughs> the walk of shame. Also, the, the run they had to do in the, in the semi-finals to reach the block. <laughs> it's like sprinting all the way. Next pair of climbers out then. Radim Simonov currently sitting in second place. Two tops in four attempts. Two zones in two attempts. And Jessica Pills currently in third with the flash of the first boulder. Nothing on the second boulder for her. In not past the slots, unfortunately. Just Vadim just taking his time just to get the brushes back in and brush those holds on the volumes. Meanwhile, Jessica is on board for the start of her third boulder. See what she makes of this first move. We know how to do it. Yeah, the first move. Not that we could. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we know. We have the, first, the first person did it for us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we're smart. <laughs> Here we go then, Vadim Timonov. Crucial moment for him, currently sitting in second position, just behind Andrzej Perch of the Slovenian team. It's a big moment here if he wants to win this competition. He could do very well if he tops this. Flips the right hand round, but still needs to get a match on on this next volume before going out. And he's absolutely crushing that under his hands. Oh. Uh, he's, he was still cooking. Yeah, he was dragging that right foot yeah. underneath the bottom of the two volumes. Yeah, that was good. He managed to get a bit more stability there by the looks of it. Judge is actually having a chat with him there. Not quite sure what that's about. I think there's a bit of blood in there, I Is reckon. Is he looking at his hands? Well, I think uh, the previous climber, we did just mention it, spotted Evgeny Zazulin was bleeding a little bit, so the judges can walk in there. They would have to stop the competition if it was a bad spill, but I think they've just brushed a bit of chalk in it and then we'll crack on. Yeah, I have experience with uh, bleeding and judges. Sometimes you that's really... An, it's an interesting one going, yeah. you know, going forward, how they do... Um, 
stick with that rule that you know the the climber needs to stop. Wow. Jessica nicely through that move. Yeah, that was powerful. That was smooth and powerful. Yes. Let's see how she proceeds. Jessica Pills historically not been too happy with the dynamic moves. <laughs> historically, yes. She hates them. I was being politically correct. Yes, I know. She does hate them. She. <laughs> yeah, back back to the back to the boulder and, and yeah. the idea of blood on a hold. I mean, there is potential for a, for a longer technical incident with blood on holds. And how do you deal with this? I mean, do you stop yeah. the competition, take the hold off, clean it, or just rub some chalk in it? I mean. Yeah, but you can't really clean the blood. That's it. You just rub more chalk in it and. Vadim Timonov on the top section, and can he get it done this time? Just jumps to it. Don't think that's going to work. This boulder is really going to come down to the last move, it would appear, in the men's competition. Jesse Pills with just under a minute left, looking slightly smoother on that first move now. But as we saw from Melissa Leneva, it's, it's really about this next move to the zone hold. Just going to figure out what to do with the feet there. That's the middle. That was the final Melissa Leneva attempt. That looks method. like the method. The yeah, step through. It's more, needs more power and pull from the hand, from the arm, actually, to get you back to the wall over the corner. Adam Simonov is putting in a huge fight here. He wants to win this competition. He's doing really well at the moment in second place. This is it for him. 20 seconds left. That's it for, for Jesse as well. There's one more attempt. Oh, close there for Jesse Pills. Yeah, it was a very good attempt by Jesse. I oh, got the right foot up above that lip and almost landed it on the hold. Yeah, she's giving us a bit of an insight as to what's going to be required on that one. Yeah. Vladimir Timonov's just opened the door a little bit there for Andrzej and for the other guys who are currently on one top. Yeah, with bleeding, it's it's uh, the rule is you have to show the judge that you don't have any blood in your skin. So therefore, you can actually do put your put some chalk on the skin and actually show, and the blood doesn't come out immediately, and you can go climb. I mean, I've had so much experience with this. They don't notice, or you don't notice, but then you still come up. Blood can go through your tape. Mm. Blood can go under the tape. It still managed to get its way out. And uh, well, according to the rules, they can't stop you. If you show them and you have no blood at that moment, they can't stop you, <laughs> actually. So it's a quite a problem, especially with that much bleeding nowadays. Yoni Kruder and Mia Krampel out next there, Mia Krampel with a fine top on the crimps on women's number two, currently sitting in second place. Yone Kruder, an unfamiliar fifth place for him at the moment. Maybe this boulder will be a little bit up, more up his street. Just one top to his name at the moment. Mia looked like she was almost falling out of the corner there to touch those starting holds. Yone Kruder easily up to this top move then. This boulder is coming down to a bit of a one move wonder. Got to figure out what to do. All the everything on that boulder makes you want to fall off leftwards, and you're doing everything you can to stay on. Try to go for the jam. Mia on the first move out the corner, drops it the first time. She's a bit too stretched with her legs at the beginning, so it's a bit harder to push off and do the dynamic move, do the spin. So Stashi said that she was an awesome crimper. What's she like on dynamic spins and jumps? She's improved. <laughs> that was better. But this is the move. It looks like we've seen the method. This slow dynamic left foot through, right foot around the corner. Just the distance you've got to cover there as well. That hold is relatively OK, but it's quite far around. The Come thing on. she's trying has a potential, actually, to push with your left hand, completely stand up, change feet, and take another step, and then just push over. That could be hypothetically a solution. Two minutes left to find that solution. Yone Kruda really winding down the clock after one attempt so far. And this man, male border is really draining all the energy because you basically come to the top hold every time and it's not an easy sequence. Yeah, we're not really seeing anybody make any progress on that last move, no, really. No, but you still drain yourself so you have lesser chances for the top move.
Both climbers on the boulders now. Yune back in, up to his high point almost. Mia into the next dynamic move. And she tried this. Wow, that's, that's, she's on the next foothold. This is looking really good here for Mia Krampel. Fast progress on this boulder. Can she, she spring off that back left slowly, foot? Slowly, slowly. Yes, using the arm instead. Now she just had to, has to push off. Still yeah. going to go dynamically. Needs to get ready to pop off, <sighs> but oh no. Yeah. Right so foot blue at the last to, minute. Yeah, when you're so stretched, it's so hard to keep the weight through the shoes. Last 40 seconds. Don't think we're going to see a top here unless Yerni pulls some magic out the crack, out of the bag and sprints up. Mia's back on as well. She's got a bit of an idea this time. Yeah, her method is actually quite slow though. So will it be enough time? 20 odd seconds remaining. Yerni Kruder last time went for a little double catch to finish. Hit, he's trying to jump left and flip the right at the same time. Let's see if that works. Oh, close. Interesting method. The closest we've seen, but ultimately he shakes the head. He's out of time. Yeah, he's going to be out of time as well. Different method, same result, unfortunately, on women's number three for Mia Krampel. In the men's competition, it's going to be quite crucial now. If Andre Perch can find a top, you're putting himself in a brilliant position. Coming out in second as it stands, a quick top. Put him far and away in the lead. With the current first place position, Venom Timonov already had his attempts on this boulder in the women's competition. Patrick Haddock is back in action. Katya should be able to do this one if she finds out the correct solution quick enough. Dynamic climber? Yeah, yeah, quite dynamic. She's quite a mixture of everything. Well, we know Anjay's a dynamic climber as well, don't we? Yeah, he's very, very good on this style. Very good on the volumes. And he's going for the win here. Obviously, won't win it on this boulder, but could put himself in a great position if he does. He would be the first climber with three tops. We've seen this so far, absolute cruise really through this first section, it's, but it's all about this next move. It's looking solid on the match, much more solid than other climbers. Just eyeballing this top hold now. It's that hard, it's hard really to say. hard, that last yeah, move. He looks close, but realistically, there's nothing to hold on to that top hole. It's a completely no. side pulled volume with nothing on it. So I think potentially Yone's technique of the flip with the right hand Could might work. be the way. Yes, or some magic with the feet. Oh, talking about magic with the feet, good <laughs> timing. Nice segue because Kachikadic was really close there. That was a good start. She left managed to plant through. that left foot very solid. Yeah. Didn't really have enough to bring the hips through and the right foot around the corner. First lesson learned, maybe? Yeah. It's sometimes good that you have just enough time to learn something from the boulder mm. and be able to get over the cruxes. Good opportunity to focus on Katya as Anjay just takes a good long rest. This method is interesting. Risk here. This time then. It works. The crowd's right behind her on this one, really eyeballing that next zone hold. Whoa. That was so close. Close. <laughs> that volume does have a little bit of a lip on it. I think she just needs to get a tiny bit higher with the right hand to find the best bit of that hold. Got the feet working there, though. That left foot came through, managed to plant the right foot around the corner pretty uh, decisively. And Jay's on his second attempt. There we go, Andre, like you said, back on his second attempt. Let's see if he's come up with a plan for this last move to the finishing hold that really isn't a finishing hold. The double again, maybe, left and right. 
Trying something different with the wrap there. <laughs> Comes up with no real solutions, no answers to that top move. Shake of the head. Catches Catch back on. Oh! <laughs> So I heard some screaming out there. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that right hand just didn't seem to get that high up that right hand volume Definitely. where the zone is. <laughs> yeah, if she didn't have any skin beforehand, she certainly hasn't got any now. <laughs> Taping, exactly. Straight yeah. in for the tape. <laughs> Not much time left, though. It's going to be efficient taping here. Sasha, I remember you have been in this position in finals oh, before. So many taping times. Taping as you run out of time. So many times. You have to train your taping. Yes, uh, I mean, I've perfected my technique during so many finals and you just have to put it down, put it on, stick on it and then just try again. Andrzej back in then, third attempt. Has he found any new solutions while sitting on the mat? Has he thought about anything else? Surely he'll have a look at this flip with the right hand. This time, Katja oh. just misses it again. Looks like Andrzej just going to go for a Go for it, it's just pressing it out, an absolute oh, desperate squeeze. this is impossible, come on. Cash is going back in no matter what. Madness. She's just gone. Oh, oh. She was the closest now, actually. Oh, God. Nearly landed on the brush. Oh. Putting her body on the line here. Great show from Kadikaj. Crowd appreciates an effort like that. Two I think her fingers are a lot shorter left. after that boulder. Yeah. <laughs> there we are in the studio. Someone has just brought us a coffee, so we're all very happy. <laughs> Good show so far. Really enjoying ourselves here at the studio. Blockmasters all the way through the semi-finals. Halfway through or more of this finals round. So go to Pishko and Luchko Rakovic neck then next, I should say. I'm wondering how Sergei will find out, solve the upper part with his height. The he height might be, might, totally might be an advantage. Might be, might be quite the opposite. Yeah, could go either way for him, I think, on this. Maybe there was some way he can keep that right foot stable in the crack yeah. and hold the finishing hold. It'd be really interesting to talk to the root setters about what this boulder the last move intention was. This was the one that they were having the big discussion about when we were when we went to check the boulders. Luchka on then. She starts her attempt on block three. Judge has told her she's not made a No but <laughs> that, that's still not it. There <laughs> we go. That, that's, that's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. So the Pishko looking good up to this point, but he's he also looking pretty big reach, in that position. He could reach this actually. Yeah, turn around. Ah, put good, the foot good point. And then grab the top hold. That could work. Yeah, by flipping the right hand, he would put himself in a good position to hold the side pull. Opposing volumes at that stage. Luchka's got the lean around. Close, but got to get that right leg moving. I think going from that press position she was in then she didn't have enough momentum to carry around the corner it was more of a lean and go but i think going from uh, from both hands out on that volume get a little bit more momentum to carry around the corner looks like sergey tapishko just off shot as well as going in for the desperate liquid chalk Focal Luchka holds that with one hand that time. Going for the press again with that left hand. She can almost looks like she can almost reach it, but not quite. Just low on that volume as well. Coming up short. Really easily into that position, but just being so stretched by palming off that left volume. Doesn't have much bend left in the arm to push towards that zone hold around the corner. Sergi, back in. See what he can do this time. Again, she hasn't actually made a proper start there. It'd be interesting to see if the judge calls her off on that. Really doesn't actually matter on this problem. You just stand in the same position anyway. Pretty sure she didn't make a correct start there. 
not to worry. So go to Pishko, chalking up through these moves then, trying to get as much chalk on board as possible through these volumes to try and get his way to that finish hold. Luchka was looking quite close there. This time all eyes on the Ukrainian athlete here. Looks like he's going to get the flip. I was just saying he's looking, eyeballing the flip. He's tired, obviously. Currently down in fourth position. One top. Only 30 seconds left for this boulder. Luchka is back on. Will she go with a little bit more dynamic movement this time? Back into the press, though. Didn't seem to have worked too well for her before. It was a little bit better. That right foot went around the corner, but Sergi back on for his final go. 15 seconds left. See if he's got some magic this time. Looks really tired in the left arm as he goes for that. Like Stash said, he's absolutely out of gas. And Luchka is out of time, unfortunately. Not much action on these third boulders at the moment. Competition's just slowed down a notch. Could be this boulder, if anybody finds a top, separates the climbers for our podium positions. If anybody gets a top here, you would have thought that'd be going very well for the win. Our podium, at the very least. Jakob Schubert and Yanni Gombrit out next end. Jakob Schubert currently sitting in sixth place. That's not to say he can't rocket up the leaderboard. Could easily get himself into a podium position, top three, if he finds a top with this one. And Yanni Gombrit, only climber on two tops at the moment. No top so far on both boulders, final pair. For somebody like Jakob now on, in this position, this is one of those situations where halfway through this semi-final, he's got to be super positive thinking ahead to these next two boulders. Because if he can pull two tops off fairly quick, he's going to be looking for a win. Can suddenly all change. Easily for Yanya on the rotation there. Can she get this move done then, Yanya Garnbrett? Just fumbles ah, the feed a little bit. She put her bounced off. Almost went with too much momentum there. Yep. Jakob Schubert into this next shoulder move then, looking strong on the right-hand side, easily pushing up there. It was Andrzej Perhatz who really had the best go at matching this volume. Jakob Schubert can't find the foot positions at all. This is not looking too promising at the moment for men's number three. Had to pull something very special out of the bag. Does get the flip. No idea, unfortunately, for Jakob. Opportunity to focus back on Janja, though. Almost did her <laughs> significant <Yeah. laughs> signature move. The Janja style. The big body rotation, head all the way back. I think the crowd wants to see something special here from Janja. <laughs> yeah. Pleading for the big show from Janja. Yeah. Well, Everybody's got their cameras poised. Exactly, she has to keep the audience entertained. You know, <laughs> if she just keeps doing the same thing, it's not fun anymore. Then. Well, there's not much happening on men's boulder either, to be honest. So, <laughs> come on, Yanya. <laughs> DJ in the arena builds the pressure up with some uh, strong atmosphere. This is it then for Yanya Garnbrit's third attempt. Big build up. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's what they wanted. That's exactly what they were looking for. Yanni yeah. Garnbret gets it done again. Puts on the show for everybody. She is incredible. Awesome move in the end from the root setters. That's what they really wanted to see. Someone get that top. But it's Jakob Schubert right now. He's pushing towards the top of men's number three. He's been up here already. What can he find this time? Gets a solid match, but he's looking out of control and there's just nothing there at all. Nothing for the left and certainly isn't anything for the right. Yeah, that top hold is, uh, doesn't have anything else on it other than the friction that comes with these blocks volumes. There's no screw holes in them, there's no T-nut holes. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's the same, same very similar angle to the one that he's going off as well. So I'm not too sure how they're gonna 
hold it or intend intended by the root setters. I'm not too sure what the move is here. Yeah, it's really interesting. Most of the time, I would say we could have a pretty good read of the boulders, but at this one, we're coming a bit unstuck because we can't really see any real way of controlling that swing out to the left. Maybe Jakob Schubert can find something special. He's done it before. Can he do it again? Certainly needs to do something special because he's down in last position at the moment. Passing quickly to the first part. He needs to save some energy for this one. I'm trying to just chop that right hand and so hard. Absolutely nothing, no matter how much the MC in the arena gets the crowd to get behind him realistically. The method just wasn't there. Shake it ahead from a few people down the front. Boulder men's number three gets no tops. And Yagambra gets it done though. She is well, she's won the competition, let's be honest. There's no yeah. real surprises there. Well, first victory here, so yeah, good for her. Add that <laughs> to the trophy cabinet. Yep. It's almost an anti-climax, to be honest. Awesome <laughs> climbing nonetheless, though, from Yanya Garber. It can't take anything away from her. And the podium positions are still up for a fight. Certainly, it's all go on the maths in the men's competition on the final boulder. I think, really, when we look back at the, the, the last two boulders that Yanya has been on, two very very different styles one obviously like brutally hard crimpy boulder and then one her forte what we know Yanya for the dynamic uh, movement took her three attempts but uh, a really good demonstration of quality climbing there so here we go with the last boulder the ever smiling Melissa Leneve and Evgeny Zulin Stasha will be pleased to know that the starting hold in the women's competition there has no texture. Yes. But it is a good hold, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big hold, I should say. And a really exciting women's finish, hopefully, on women's number four. Some big moves. Keep the crowd psyched. Wow. Oh, top oh, save. That, that oh. was pretty. Just as they're saying, top save. Just on the r swing back in, just loses it. Quite impressive that that arm is still connected after that <laughs> move. <laughs> that looked pretty brutal then. Again, he's struggling with this first move. Waving the fingers around. That right hand is pretty small that they're starting with. going to hurt yeah <laughs> he's already got some tape on there keep firing off like that that tape's gonna be ripping off the fingers as well as some skin a little and ever not wasting too much time not right re resting for too long she's straight back into this women's number four it's a fast boulder so she can allow herself to pushing it out nicely good sh shoulder strike from the right hand side there. this is the big jump Oh, the one-hander lander. Oh, <laughs> big moment. Held the rotation, fell off as the foot went up. I'm sure Yanya will give a great show on this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's really interesting seeing that hold. I mean, we we walked along underneath these boulders, Michael, and that that hand that's going into is big, but it looks quite rounded, and obviously need to land that foot really to stabilize and stop the swinging around on that hold. Well, importantly, not land the hold with a completely straight arm because it's so hard to reel it back in at that point off the one arm. Again, he's managed to make some progress in the end on that first move. It's a long move, huh? Yeah, we didn't read it like that as we were down on the mats. We thought that would be a toe hook rather than a hand hold. There was no chalk on there whatsoever from the uh, route testing team. We'll see as some of the smaller climbers, some of those smaller than Evgeny anyway, have a go on that final move, or that final boulder, I should say, but Melissa Lenev's getting the crowd going here. She wants to go out with some fireworks here. The French superstar retired from the international competitions. Loves these big fun comps, though. This time. 
That's such a Same complex move, effort. actually. Just going in with 40 seconds left, wants another go. <laughs> Asked for another rise out of the crowd. Never too tired. Struggling to get out to that left hand. Surely tired now. Over the top now for the bonus. Oh. <laughs> it's oh, like a rag doll that time. It's going to be feeling that one in the morning. Great show as ever from Melissa Leneve. Great to her. have her here at the Studio Blockmasters. Superb effort to get through to the finals. Such talent. Yeah. She's climbing outside most of the time now. She barely spares any time, spends any time training actually for, for these comps. I mean, why would you train for these comps if you're retired? I mean, come on. <laughs> but yeah, she still has so much experience, so much sense for these things that it just, she could cruise easily through such borders, especially when she's so motiva motivated. This is really crucial now in the men's competition regarding the podium positions. Valim Timonov comes out with a current position of second place. Two tops in four attempts and three zones in three attempts. The zones will be important and the tops will definitely be important. Looks solid through that first move though. Men's competition is really close to finish. Jessica Pills currently in third position. Maybe able to progress to second. Easily through that lower section. Let's see what she can do on this big jump across. It's a fast move. Vadim back on. Chuck into the toe hook. Nice. <laughs> Nice move. Get it out, yeah. <laughs> Roll over jump, stick the toe at the same time. I think that move, making a prediction early, will really suit Anjay. These left hand he's got here is not very good hold at all. It's very sharp. Interesting method there. Doing it as a timing move. Other climbers will show us if that's the way. Jessica back on. Big move out there. Big shoulder press and then this quite violent move over the top. Yeah, it's a good word to describe it, violent. Violent, yeah. Brushes move in on Vadim's. Boulder. You can see that left hand now that's being brushed by the guy with the short brush. It's actually a slot as well, so you can't get a full crimp on it either. Desperate boulders here in both male and female rounds. He has more chance without the foot. <laughs> yeah, good, Maybe, good yeah. progress there. But it looks like he didn't need the toe after all. When he said that, he didn't do the move. Oh, much slower cross. That was that better from Jesse Pills. Two hands at once. <laughs> Jessica Pills looking good for a top here. Really slow for balls to finish. Fading Timonov also stuck the move. Jessica Pills gets it done. Finishes the competition off with a nice top. Pushes her up the rankings into a second position. One minute, 12 seconds left. Only Timonov has done the moves at the bottom, just fell off the top section. Looks like it's still a lot of hard climbing, though, when you get through that first complex movement on this men's boulder. Another move out into an undercut and land the left foot out on that left-hand simple volume, top left-hand corner of your screen. In the end there, on the women's boulder, it looks like after you've done that jump, it's not too bad. That's a few moves. I don't know, I haven't seen, are these balls full texture, half texture, or...? Texture on the top. Okay. Yeah. Makes it easy. That's a cool move, yeah. 
Really cool move, jumping up there with a toe hook catch off the opposing shoulder hold on the right hand side. 30 seconds, Badami's back on. Going to be his last go, I think. Yeah, I need to be really precise with the toe and then catch as much as surface area you can. Badami Tumanov bows out. Could well be a podium for him. Currently in first position. Anjay and Sergei Pishko. Oh, lots of people still in the running for podiums here. Men's competition is really tight. Slovenian duo sharing the walkout onto the mat. Mia Krampol, Jürgen Kruder. Mia still has a chance. Both super accomplished already. So Yone will give this everything as will Mia. Mia can still be second after this one if she tops it. She'll have more zones than Jesse. But still can't endanger Yanya. First to pull on then, it's Yone. Mm, Hard little block one. <laughs> first move to the blocked blocked edge. Yeah, using a slightly different foot, se foot sequence there, Vadim Timonov. He went off the left foot on the right hand, her first right hand hold. If Yone will figure that. Yeah, just trying to find the right method through this section. Jesse Peels looked really strong to finish, actually. I think going into the season, it's a really strong showing from Jesse. Showed good fitness in the competition. It's a bit better from Mia through that initial mini boulder onto the meat. We saw Jessica go with two hands in the end to complete this move to the zone. Big strapping on the shoulder there on the right hand side. Dasha, what's that? Well, it's kinesio tape. It's become really popular for the past two years. Is there an injury there though? Well, probably not, but it's mainly being used nowadays to release the extra tension that piles up with all the trainings and comps. Um, it also helps to get your mind off of that stress being caused by, by all that tension. I mean, you can risk an injury with further competing, but still, it's just um, an aid. Mm. It used to be like a taboo topic about it. Like, is it placebo? Does it really work? Why are you wearing it? Do you have a, an injury? And then everybody just stares at you and don't know what's going on. Uh, but now it's... Everyone's all in nowadays. Yeah. Nice little double catch there for Mia. Well, if there's anything that's going to stress her shoulder, it's these next two moves on the right-hand side. Big push out and then a big jump across. Yeah. Oh, nice little double catch. Yeah, went again with two hands, just like Jessica. Seems to be the method. Let's have a look at the good look at this top section then. Jesse Pills made it look relatively easy. I doubt it is. Big smash up, so there is texture on the top of that one. And the next one up is a huge jug. Can't miss that one, there. Oh, nice little double across to finish. Good end to the competition for Mia Krampel. Which we're pretty proud with tonight's performance. Definitely. Moved over Jesse. So I think we already have our podium for tonight. Yanya, Mia, Jessica. Exactly right. Podium's decided. Battle still to be had, though. Currently, Yerne is in the middle of his own personal battle with this fourth boulder. He's not quite managed to hit that toe hook. He's getting a little bit angry with himself, I think. I can see when he jumps that toe hook, his leg's still quite bent, which means it's really hard to get anything out of it if it hits it. A lot going on. Try something different. 
But he's run out of time now. Thank you to the crowd. Thank you, Yerni Kruder. Good show, as ever. I think ultimately he's going to go away slightly disappointed with tonight's performance. It's hard to know exactly where he is in terms of his fitness for the season. Overall, he's had a good time. He's down in fourth position. He won't be improving on that. And Jay out next alongside Katja. Let's focus on the men's competition now because that's where gold medals, well, silver and bronze, can all still be won or lost. <laughs> Stasha Geo here in the studio alongside Gaz Parry and Mike Langley. Stasha's been entrusted with the maths. <laughs> Trying to figure it out quickly. No better person <laughs> considering what you're studying. Oh, well, it, I wouldn't rely on my mathematical mathematics <laughs> without a paper it's not not, not really good <laughs> i need paper and pen <laughs> yeah we've seen pejo coming up with some interesting method i hope it works oh, nice double again on women's number four nice method Melissa Lanerve's one-hander lander looking not that necessary for these athletes. Looks like it's a bit of a procession. Women's number four now. Good way to finish the competition. A few attempts, but ultimately it's getting done. Big <laughs> back heel <laughs> drop knee. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a height problem right now because she couldn't really fit into Oh, wow. big fight. She's looking so gassed right now. Looks like she's gonna get it done. Is that a flash? That's a flash. That's a flash. Yeah. That's the first flash for the ladies. Four. Good effort there. She secured her fourth place. Nice to get a top to end the competition, go out on a bit of a high. Uh, Anjay has got a potential gold medal up for grabs here. He's got to surpass Vadim Timonov. If he finds a top, he does it automatically. Has a zone, so... so... We've had somebody here before. This move, though, now into the undercut. Oh, God. And the foot is landed so it. So strong, this guy. Oh. I'm so impressed. It's amazing. Really happy for this guy. I mean, we're the same age. We've been competing together since the very early youth, <laughs> youth comps. And seeing him progress so much makes me happy. He looks like he's really hitting some form yeah, at the start of win. this season, which is great to see. And a showboat before the final move. Good moment here at the Studio Blockmasters. Well-deserved win there for Anjay. Big moment, hugs all round. Is that, he? would you say that's his first senior win as an international event? It's on the international calendar. Let me think. I think so. Not sure. Yeah, he was third in the European Championships in 2017. That was his first medal in such a big comp. But this is his first victory, I'd say, yes. What a way to go into the season. Yeah, builds up confidence <laughs> for <Absolutely>. sure. <laughs> Sergei, if he tops he can be second, but he needs three attempts. Yeah. That will come down to the attempts to the zones. Is he starting on the slot higher up there? That's quite interesting. <laughs> that makes it so easy. <laughs> That's the benefit of being so tall. Yeah, yes. a bit of a different Enough folder. with the downsides of being tall. I'm guessing that means they're counting at those bottom it two volumes as a pair. It's so easy for him. Oh my god. Goodness, he's that second right now. That was a completely right different wow. climb for him. I'm impressed. Still had to put on the halt ultimately, but he had to do the first move completely different. He didn't really have to do the little stab into the first crimp. Let's have a closer look at that because the tape is on the lower volume. 
I don't want to get myself completely confused with the rules because I do believe there's been a quick change to that rules from 2018 to 2019 with volumes touching each other as to which one is classed as the starting hold. Even that next move, not a single toe hook required. Progresses quickly up the leaderboard there. Second place secured. That's about it. Podium decided. Yep. So Jakob can only get fourth. Solidly over into the zone for Luchka. Still, we've seen some fighting on this last couple of moves. Gets the drop knee in into the ball, and uh, she's dropped it. We too low with her body. Certainly yeah. seen that it's not so easy up there. Might catch a tiny bit of drilling in the background. A quick studio deconstructions going on. <laughs> We're losing our banner. Our backdrop. That one's needed. The guys get themselves ready for the medal presentation. After this last boulder, get the podium out. Luchka running down the clock now and thinks she's getting ready to step forward. Crowd gets behind her. The Slovenian teammates get behind her. She's already done the hard move. Done the hard move once. Let's see if she can do it again. Crowd are going mantle out there. Ah, oh. uh, that's that's very lame when you are s you fall so high up, then you can't repeat the previous sequence because you've lost too much energy. Back to the tape. You can see yeah, the blood on the so finger blood there. Coming that's out severe. There. That's severe. That's not good for this week's training. Yeah, you automatically lose two to three days and the next two to three trainings you have to wear tapes on. Well, considering the first cup, World Cup is two weeks away. That's good. That's it's not that's ideal. But it's enough time, trust me. It's enough in time to grow back. But in it's five to six days, you're completely healed without further damage. It does hold you back over the next two or three days, though, leading yeah. into next week. That Let's see if she can finish off the start, though. She's not going to go out without a fight here, Bushka. She's got time. Got enough time, commits the move. Oh, I she didn't quite make enough. it with two hands. Didn't jump enough. So short. Left her body on the line here tonight, but put on a good show. Luchka Rakovic finishes outside of the podiums, unfortunately. Fifth place for her. Don't think she'll be doing any finger modeling this weekend, that's for sure. <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Yeah. <laughs> Highly paid work, if you can get it. I used to do it in my past. <laughs> well, they're definitely more paid than this was one. A, was that for a sausage company? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a team meeting there on the mat as everyone compares the state of the hands. Yeah, looks like you can barely clap the hands together. There's no, you can't. so much pain through the fingertips. It happened to me very often that I get a quite severe inflammation of my fingertips for another two days. I can't touch them, I can't move. It just keeps pulsing. Certainly can't pick up a hot cup of tea. Here we are then with no. the last boulder and the last two climbers of the Studio Blockmasters 2019. Jakob Schubert, Janja Gambrett. Both ready to pull on pretty much at the same time. Janja's off first. Janja Gambrett looking for Four tops. Just a little start from Jakob there with the back back heel touch. Jakob looked for a bit of a training round on this one. <laughs> okay, she's experimenting a bit with her own body. Sometimes she is not very practical with her <laughs> decisions. It costs her attempts and probably her shoulder right now. But yeah, it probably hurts a little bit that. I think ultimately that. What you're saying, though, just experimenting is why she can pull off some of the moves that she does. Because she just goes out there and sees what happens sometimes. True, but you don't do this on comps. Come on. <laughs> it's not the place or time to experiment. You do that at your, at your home lab. I think Yanya 
Come on, Jakob. Already knows that she's won, obviously. So let's see if she bothers putting any more effort in. Oh, oh nice show here from Jakob Schubert to finish. Just got to look around the corner where it is. Gets it done. Jakob Schubert finishes at the top. So Two tops for Jakob there. Good finish. Fourth place. Yes. Yeah, and he gets the jump done as well. Surely she'll finish it off here for the four tops in the round. Only climber, surely, to have four. Next climber down is Mia Krampel with two. And Yagambra takes away her first Studio Blockmasters win with a procession on the last boulder, which concludes our competition. Good night here for the Studio Blockmasters finals. Great performance by Yanya there. She did fall off more than once. She's still human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see. It's good to see Jakob down at the front there. Congratulating everybody. Here we go then. That is the final standings. Anje takes away the win, his first senior title. Pre-season, what a great way to start for him. Sergei Tepishko goes away with an absolute cruise of the final boulder to secure second place. The big Russian, Vadim Timonov, does so well to take away the bronze medal. Jakob Schubert, who we just saw there, goes away with a well-deserved fourth place. Jörne Kruder really looked slightly disappointed with his evening, could have done a lot more, and that's going to be interesting going in to the first World Cup in Mayring in Switzerland in just two weeks' time. Evgeny Zazulin finishes off the top six with one top in three attempts, two zones in three. Superb win for the Slovenian. And in the women's competition, it's a further win for Yanni Garnbrett takes away her first ever Studio Block Masters win with four tops. Next climber down, Mia Klampol with just two tops in three zones, six attempts to those tops. And Jessica Pills looking in good fitness going forward for this season. No doubt she'll be competing in the overall throughout the year, looking for one of those places in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Catch Kadit always puts on a good show, ends up in fourth place. Luchka Rakovic for Slovenia in fifth. We just saw really putting her body on the line tonight and put on a good show. Melissa Laneve, talking of putting on a good show, was superb once again and great for the crowd to watch. A really, really enjoyable evening here. We will be sticking with the competition for the podium presentation. Final thoughts, Stasha? Good comp? Good comp. Good, uh, exciting finals, lots of turnovers, lots of different solutions, which is very good. We need varieties of uh, those creativity and then and, and, uh, different different styles. And all in all, satisfying, yeah. Gaz, for you? Yeah, I think it's been a really interesting in final and a really interesting comp overall. And I think like we, we see through out of the season, and it's not necessarily an indicator here of how somebody like Jakob will perform in the actual Boulder World Cups. I mean, it's it's so tight at that top end with the depth and quality of the men's field. It's a little bit more uh, defined with the ladies, but still we do know that Janja is, is beatable. But um, she's laid it down at the start of the season with this first win at Studio Block. So I think that's a great, great a result for Janja. It's a very, very good start to the season. I agree. And I think um, Studio Block will continue to go from strength to strength with this event as well. I mean, they really do put a lot of effort into this, the whole show, stripping a wall completely of holds. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a it's huge not, gym. It's not huge just gym. an elite comp either. It's <laughs> very open to... Uh, other people competing there's a lot of easy boulders for people so if you're thinking about coming away and having a go next year at an international comp maybe studio block is the one for you uh, okay i've just ran off for a second i just come back with an interesting development this competition might not be over there has been appeal against sergey Tepishko climb on the last boulder so we were talking about it when it was on screen he started with his hand on the sort of blocked crimp left hand the tape is on the lower volume. Those volumes are touching. I am not going to put myself in a position of oh, saying I yes. completely understand the rules because there was, there was a rule last year. I believe it has changed to get rid it of this whole 
holds touching, what counts as starting hold, clustered volumes, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, it changed. I've talked to several judges this year, and the rule, the current rule, is that it doesn't matter how many volumes are touching, only the volume that was taped is counted as the starting position, uh, starting hold. So and anything on that hold counts as well, but anything yeah. touching does not count. So correct me if I'm wrong. There was a, a rule last year. Last year, that yes. Was that counted things that are touching as one. Yes. That's been updated. So 2019, uh, in theory, Sergei Tepichko's start is incorrect. Yes, yes. Because Interesting. Uh, it's a whole new rules yep. uh, brought up in, in 2019 because there were several situations last year with these touching things. Uh, they weren't very clear. Yeah. for observing, for judging, and uh, in Adidas Rockstars there were some problems. I so think there was this big uh, situation with Yanya actually in Mayring and right at the very start of the season, I think it was in the semi-final round where the judges couldn't decide if she had done a proper start or not, and yeah. you know it, the actual boulder when it came down to it, she clearly started in a way that was sensible, but the yes. rule, the new rule, confused everybody, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting situation developing here. Um, I am just going to run off screen and just get another update because one of the technical delegates here has just run in and let us know. We will see. Interesting when this plays out live. So difficult for the local officials, obviously difficult for us here. And difficult in for the, the competitors as well because oh, there's a lot of people out there waiting for the results. Just been handed the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Which way up do I read it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't understand this. Tough finish here in the competition. I think they're basically <laughs> nodding, saying they're going to give it to him. So potentially controversial finish. Having said that, just looking at one of our multiple monitors here, there are people out there brushing the holds once again. So we could be in for a reclimb situation here. Okay. Sergei Depichko may be asked to come out. Sasha, Sasha, what's the update? Yes, but does this mean he'll climb uh, as... Uh -huh, okay, so Depichko will climb again. And his timer will be set to 3 minutes 45 seconds uh, left to climb. So they would have reviewed the footage to see when he actually made the incorrect start. He gets to climb again because the judge at the time of him climbing didn't spot the false start and didn't pull him off the wall at the time. So he gets to go again. He is currently in second position with two tops and four zones. Basically, this could mean Venin Timonov could be pushed up. So could Jakob Schubert. May not be over just yet. Pressure's on for us here in the commentary box, but it's certainly on for Sergei Depishko down at the wall. And there he is back on. This is actually his false start replay here. So you can see the left hand is up high. There is two volumes there. The green tape is for the lower hold. And if the new rule is, as we suggest here in the commentary box, that is a false start. I think we actually called that right out on the moment. Yep. Correction yep. of the uh, rules from Stasha here. Good to have you here as ever, Stasha. <laughs> um, yeah, we got it right. As we said, we spotted it at the time, but he has been asked to come out and reclimb. It does affect the podium positions. Nobody really wants to see this in the competitions, but that's the rules. Judges have got a very, very hard job. Gaz, have you ever been in this position? You've been competing for many, many years. What's it like? Yeah, it's a really hard position. We just missed the start of him pulling on the boulder, so we made the correct start again there. And as expected, he did cruise the boulder, and obviously the rules are the rules, and there was the right choice, I think, there to make him climb again. That appeal went in, and um, with the rules checked and confirmed from Graham Alders and the IFSC delegate, that was the right choice. He came back out, pulled on from the official start, and obviously cruised the boulder. Yeah, ultimately that was 10 minutes of panic and 10 seconds of cruising <laughs> the boulder yeah, yeah, yeah. again. It's not easy when they pull you back and tell you, yeah, oh, you have to climb again. It's yeah. You're finally relieved that you just got done with this boulder and then, yeah, you have to do it again. And it's, it was he was lucky that he actually cruised it the first time, so it wasn't that hard in the second time as well. Podium presentation will now be erected then. All standings remain the same. Gaz going into the season just two weeks out then. Lots of big names didn't make it through to this final. Some big names didn't make it through to the semi-final. 
But going forward, there's a couple of people there on the list who are potentially looking quite strong this season, especially the winner in the men's, Andrzej Sergej Pishko, we just saw there, and a couple of Russians who haven't been that consistent in 2018, potentially looking like kind of some of the bigger names coming forward in this season. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since we've had some real um, top-end Russian climbers. A good, a good few years now, but with uh, Vadim, looking like he's absolutely on form, totally crushing, and uh, Evgeny, I mean, okay, he, he finished sixth in that final, but that was uh, super impressive to come back out again and climb that final boulder and still walk up it. It was a very, very talented climber out there. And obviously, like, Anze, what a performance this weekend. I mean, we, we spent some time with him a uh, month or so ago and um, a super talented climber. And this season, really, it looks like his level has just sort of really hit top form. Perfect timing, maybe. And Stasha, Jakob Schubert, potentially with this field, would be looking for a podium at yes. least. Do you think he's going to be disappointed or realistically he doesn't really care about these smaller events? Well, it's a good uh, feedback for him. He knows that he still has to work on his endurance, that it's not in there forever. And uh, keeping the shape up is what actually you need for these events. And why best competitors come to these events is actually to see how they're doing, what they have to work on. It's like the last corrections before the, the season actually starts. And someone like Jakob, well, lots of climbers these days will be looking at the overall and such a big year it is to get into those combined finals. Yes. Looking forward to the World Championships in Tokyo in August. I mean, it's very early days in the season. Jakob, someone like him, will he look to peak towards the World Championships in August or is he just kind of flatlining all season? Uh, I think he looks to peak because that's what I was planning as well. You know, uh, it's... Uh, if, you're, if that's your main goal, you're doing everything to get on a certain fair level mm. into the season and then just build up, gather more experience, learn more throughout the season, see what you can build up, un I mean, until you still can, and then be at your perfect shape just before the comp. And aside Melissa Leneve, who's obviously retired from international competitions, can you see any names there in the women's competition who aren't focusing on the overall? Are they all free discipline climbers? Well, I think they're all focused on, on three disciplines. I'd, it's sad that not many of them are good in speed. So I can't say Mia and Luchka. Mm, I mean, they can still improve, but I don't know how, if, if it will be enough for good positions, Katja as well. I mean, uh, Mia, Mia is really good in bordering and leads, so that might uh, kick her results up. Um, Luchka as well, but speed also has a huge influence in everything. And uh, if you're not perfect in two disciplines, it's, it's okay. I mean, if you are perfect in two disciplines, it's okay, but if you're not, if you're not Yanya, yeah. Well, Yanya you can, can see afford not being that good in speed. You I can mean, see yeah. in Innsbruck how quickly the overall competition can get away with you it if changes. you get a bad result in speed. All the time it changes. Speed's first and it can get away with you straight yes, away. Yes, yes. And uh, every tiny little change in results just makes a huge difference in the overall. At the end. You can't predict anything until it's over. It's a crazy exciting a season ahead of us for those just as spectators at home. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard process, um, definitely nearly impossible to plan yeah. because you have to keep up with everything. You have to keep up with endurance, even though Villar is like in July. Mm. Uh, and then you're extremely tired from all the power things that you've done. And then you still have to keep up with this. So you get extremely tired during another session and another session. And you kind of end up drowning <laughs> in all those trainings but if you skip something it might cost you quite a lot with this kind of combination it's mixing up all kinds of movements like fast movements dynamics endurance coordination and body gets confused and it's hard to train that way well it's really new territory as well and it's new territory not just for the athletes but the coaches the, as well. the support crew i mean if there's ever a year to make your name as a coach, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one, definitely. But I'm, I'm very, very certain that one person uh, being the head coach cannot be able to coach everything. You need supportive stuff, um, meaning conditional coaches, physiotherapists, psychologists, uh, 
I guess ultimately it's going to come down to how much financial support oh, you have as yes, a team as well. That's, uh, I think, the most important thing. And actually, when we look back histori historically, countries that have most medals actually are the most financially stable. Yeah. Isn't that true? <laughs> that's how it works, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. There's always a few anomalies out there, but generally speaking, the more support you have, the better you can perform. Exactly, exactly. You can teach more kids to do some sports. You can fund more coaches, uh, more education, and uh, build up your team for, for some future Olympics. Presentation just coming together together here at the Studio Block Masters. We do hope you enjoyed the show, enjoyed the finals up to their really varied set of boulders tonight. Interesting tour from the root setters and definitely some talking points, that's for sure. We are on with the presentation and the women's third medal goes very well deserved to Jessica Pills. Austrian superstar made the combined finals lead world champion as well. Back in Innsbruck 2018, nice start to the season, bit of pocket money there for her. Spend that on some finger tape, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of rolls for the season, yeah. <laughs> a couple of thousand rolls, maybe. Oh, that's absurd. Okay. <laughs> Comments. Mia Krampel takes second place for Team Slovenia. Two tops and three zones for her. Really impressive top on number two on the crimps. Showed a really good amount of strength on the crimps there. Taking the win, though, no real surprises here tonight. You know, it's not over until it's over. And Yanya Garnbrit had it in the bag on the third boulder. Takes away her first ever studio block masters win. Four tops for her. Perfect start. Takes away 3,000 euros in prize money. That is a lot of finger tape. <laughs> I think she was one of the few girls in the final that didn't seem to have any issues with the She never has with issues. The she never bleeds. Never. Well, I don't know how. She, don't she only has one attempt on every boulder throughout the season. That does help. That, that, that does help. help. Yeah, that's a good point. It does, does uh, have an ongoing knock-on effect, doesn't it, when you start falling off boulders? Mm. But yeah, all, all in all, it was a very, very good effort and a good demonstration of uh, quality climbing from Yanya. Onto the men's presentation then. Good result for the Russian Vadim Timonov. Takes away the bronze medal. Two tops for him, four zones. Came down to attempts between fourth, third and second position. The big man, Sergei Svishko from Ukraine. Eastern Europe doing well tonight. Takes away second place after that. Slight situation with the recline. Looks like he needs to get his head into the updates of the rule book for 2019. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's that a must again. do. It's a must do. Because they usually publish um, main changes, but now the whole rule book has changed. The words have changed everything. So you have to read it through again. Yeah, after the uh, quiff, we're going to come back onto this conversation. Because it says celebrate Anjay's win. First big, big competition win for him. 3,000 euros to his name. Going into the finals, very psyched. Well, I was just about to say, um, I only asked that question about the uh, touching volumes because it came up at the quiff as well, yes. where there was a potential yes. pole start situation with touching holes. But that has been all cleared up now. And that is the men's ceremony. Sergei's got to bend his knees there just to get into the photographer's frames. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, standing on second place, so taller than that. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at that. <laughs> that does conclude the competition here at the Studio Block Masters 2019. From Gaz Parry here in the studio, Stasha Geo, thank you so much for joining, and everybody here at the Studio Block Masters, we hope you've had a fantastic evening, and we'll see you at the next one. Good night. Good night. Good night.
to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break. I'm ready to do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field. It's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time. My time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud. My time. My time. None of you people can tell me to stop.